right, everybody. You're listening to Nobody Listens to Us, Webcats Radio. This is our premiere episode. Everyone, put it together. Woo! Nobody Listens to Us. Here at NobodyListensToUs.com. My name is Tim Thompson, and we are here to tell you information for comedians and comedy for the informed. A show just for comedians and the lovers of comedy, and we want to just help you guys out. My name is Tim Thompson, as I said before, and I am here in New York with some of the most talented people I ever met in comedy, which also means I don't meet many people in comedy. And let me, uh, let's go around the room and introduce everyone in the crew. Uh, right on my right, my right-hand man, Marcus. Marcus, everyone give it up for Marcus. Talented comic, background in improv. Marcus, tell us about yourself. Uh, yes, Mr. Thompson. Uh, my name is Marcus Johnson. I'm also a stand-up comedian uh, and improv actor. I've been doing comedy now for three years throughout the Long Island area in Tri-State. I um, have a um, degree, well, not a degree, but I've gone to school for broadcasting, I should say. Be correct about that. I enjoy my free time uh, chasing the ladies, uh, repairing my credit score, <laughs> and uh, working hard. Um, I'm happy to be here and to do all I can to inform those who are trying to make it in the comedy field and also hopefully learn some things uh, for myself. I'm happy to be here. All right. Thanks, Marcus. All right. Right across the table, Bleeding Heart Liberal. Oh, that's me. Oh, wait. The exact opposite. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Talented comedian Rob White. Yes. How are you, Rob? How are you doing? Hello. Good. Cheers. Everyone. Oh, I'm glad to be here today. This is a wonderful assemblage of <coughs> comedians. Uh, yes, my name is Rob White. I'm a uh, stand-up comic about three years now, and um, tattoo artist by day, stand-up comic at night, uh, as well as being a million other things in between, uh, EMT, ride on the ambulance, um, member of certain secret societies, <laughs> uh, paranoid schizophrenic gun nut. That's why uh, we want you here. What else? I don't know. I'm afraid of zombies. Uh, well, who who is it? We that say? the yeah. Society of KKK? What, the KKK? No, no, Evan. That's Evan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Evan, who couldn't wait, everyone, Evan Weiss. Yeah. You've been doing comedy for, what, is this 33 years now? 33? Well, I was doing it for, like, uh, semi-regular for seven years, and I stopped for five. I was working at Rent-A-Center, basically uh, deliver stuff to people, then get chased down the block. Wow, and that's some and comedic get in the resume. Head. And now I'm doing comedy for the be- uh, for last year again. <laughs> I haven't got punched doing comedy yet, so... Uh, and he's going to get punched on the radio, too, everyone. <laughs> the night is young. Yeah, and I have associates in journalism, and uh, I work in collections. All right. That's my life. <laughs> That's horrible, Evan. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> All right, and the, our producer, talented comedian, and the brainchild behind this show, give it up for uh, Rob Chaffee. Yeah, Rob Chaffee, everyone. That's me. Yeah, uh, we're gonna see, we'll get to we'll get we'll to him. E- Evan is e- Evan's concerned that we're not going to get to our intern. We'll that get we should to we should have gone to intern. him before we went to me. Oh, I'm, I'm really he's last. He's uh, low on the totem. Yeah, relative <clears throat> to you. All right, we'll get to him. Well, yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm an amateur comedian. Whether that well, we know what that term means or not. I uh, I do stand up locally in New York, and love doing it. And very happy to have you guys here to participate in this. I'm very excited about the show, even though I don't sound it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the All right, loss thanks, of your Ralph. relative. <laughs> He's All been right. doing a lot of hard work. And last and certainly least, we have our uh, comedic intern. And uh, don't tell him this is no credit towards his uh, college classes. But we have Danny Karen, if you know what I mean. What's popping, Tim? I'm Danny Karen. I'm the last of the rung. I'm the king of the last rung. And I like to say, all right, thank you, my, Danny. <laughs> my comedy is all about a personal essay on how dysfunctional and uh, slightly pathetic I am in today's world. Hey. Okay. Um, Somehow I don't know what he means. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. You'll know. I promise. <laughs> Everyone, you'll know one day. Uh, unfortunately, will know. Yeah. Absolutely. And my name is Tim Thompson. I am a. Uh, I mean, a comedian. I guess I am an amateur comedian, just like everyone else. Um, I'm sorry, Marcus. And uh, I've been doing comedy for, uh, I just I guess, around two years. Uh, I'm a former duck owner. Uh, I hate Sudoku and uh, <laughs> long, uh, walks on the beach with uh, headless corpses. Did you actually uh, own Did you actually own ducks? I, absolutely. Yeah. You I did? did? Yeah, they were great. Long Island ducks? Uh, well, I guess we moved them to Long Island, yes. Originally Peking ducks, but uh, yeah, they were fun. They, the neighbors actually They're like the turkeys, them. actually. There are, yeah. I okay. have a, a, there's a pack of turkeys that... Uh, roam around my neighborhood. I'm leaning towards uh, more ducks and turkeys as far as cuisine. In a 
away from beef. Like, really? What? Yeah. You need beef. Why? <laughs> Weigh 50 pounds. It's a beef thing on TV. Cattle you need recall? more hamburgers. You see the beef thing on TV? They're like pushing There is a big recall on beef, but it's only because they yeah. treated them poorly and made fun of them. It's nothing wrong with the actual meat. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they, they, they were talking real down to the beef. They were like, hey, they were. you son of a cow. <laughs> It's absolutely true, but uh, I don't know. Eat beef. Stop being a wussy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, do you eat some kind of muscle okay. in general? And uh, everyone on the website, if you look, you can see. Uh, you just click on uh, "Talk to Us," and it will give you a caller ID and a number, and you can call in and participate in the show. It's not as simple as that, but yeah, oh. something along those lines. You have to actually register with a website called Talk Shoe. It only takes about thirty seconds. You pick a username, a password, put your email in. And then you'll be uh, given a PIN number to use to dial in and actually talk to us. And we actually have uh, somebody on the line right now who, see that. who could wow. actually talk to us. We wow. uh, Excellent. It's a, friend, a good friend of ours, uh, Mr. Monty Hoffman. I'm going to see if Monty wants to say hello. Do you want? Do you think we should say hello to Monty? Absolutely. Absolutely. Comedian veteran Monty Hoffman. Let's see, if Monty, let's see if Monty can hear us. And Monty, don't freak can, if you can. You there, Monty? Hey. Hey. Hey, Holy everyone, crap. give it up for Monty. You guys are, you guys are like chloroform. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> How freaking boring was that? Yeah. Holy shit. No, how you guys doing? Hey. Good. How are you, Monty? Hey, Monty. All right, good, man. Let me, let me wake up. Let me do a line of crank here. All right. <laughs> That's boring. So, uh, anyways, you guys are brilliant. Let me tell you. Huh? Thank you so much. Brilliant. What's going on, Robbie, baby? <laughs> <laughs> so what are you up to, Monty? So what are you up to, Monty? Where are you? I'm out in L.A. L.A. What are you doing in L.A.? He's, he's, what are you, he's a movie I'm star. I'm making a living. He's oh, a movie okay. star. Are you kidding? And I'm not on the internet. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are now. <laughs> yeah, you know. Isn't that great? I'm coming into your world. No, I'm out here. Uh, yeah, I got some things going on. You know how I, you know, um, I do things. Yeah, you you play, do things. Yeah, you play Always with do you. things. Do you play with Mike Marino this weekend? I saw you put something out. Yeah, we were at the... Uh, ben- we were out in Red George, the comedy club. We're, looks like we might put a new tour together. Me, him, and this guy, Tommy T. Uh, he's funny. See, I just yeah. saw him a couple weeks ago. Yeah, in New, I saw him in New Jersey. Right. Mike's, Mike brings the house down, man. I, Holy crap. What happened was I was headlining the Riviera, and he was they, he, he was my feature act. And I go, what the hell is this? I mean, I had to work. And uh, so um, we started talking, saying, look, we should, we should do this thing called the Jersey Boys. Yeah. And uh, we, we're, we're looking. It's, it's, we'll see what, what we can get going. I'm going to talk to Sharipper over at the Riviera, see if he can help us go on and get something going. And uh, who knows? Talk to Garvey. And if, I don't know if Ray, uh, you know, Ray's a little sick. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, but he'll be all right. He'll, that guy that guy can fight anything. But uh, that's what we're doing. And this guy, this other guy, Tommy T, he's got his connections. He's He's been uh, working with Danny DeVito for years. So. We'll see what we can do. Wow, that's excellent. Yeah, that sounds good for you, man. We're all happy. Very yes, nice. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You got to keep. Well, you know what it is. You know, it's like with uh, you know, anything in this business. You, you just you have to have like about twenty flames going, <laughs> and then uh, hopefully one stays lit. You know. Yes. Yeah, we're down. You know, see, uh, everybody kind of, you know, but that's that's how it is. We got like trick candles over we there. Have yeah. We have smolding. Yeah, well, yeah. We have smolding embers. They go out, but then they light back up. And this is uh, actually one of them. <laughs> I just thought I'm looking for whores on the internet while I'm talking. Oh, that's and great. you found us. That's we're really sorry. <laughs> Craigslist.com. <laughs> you porn. Craigslist.com. Twenty dollars, you can get Evan alone. You can do whatever you want to. You go now, where are you guys Where's on the you? island, right? You yeah, we're on the island. Okay, so that's just calling me, costing me long distance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we understand. Is that a way to say no, you have kidding. to go? Hey, no, no, no. Okay. Hey, Monty, dude. Can you hang out for a little while? We're going to talk about last comic in a little while. Yeah, is that cool? Uh, we're, yeah. we're, going to, we're going to talk. We're going to do a little bit of news, right? And then we're going to roll into that. So if you want to hang out, and uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. All right. Anything All else? Right. You, any guy? You guys have any? I knew that Tim's got a whole bunch of questions for you too. Oh, he's a yeah, big, I got some questions. He's a big fan of your career. So, I know, right, yeah. hey, Tim, I am single. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, mind reader over the internet. It's amazing. Uh, you know, that's, that's where my magic comes from. Oh, all right. Well, uh, you shot me down. I got like ten less questions, but uh, right, I'll definitely ask you a ton of them. All right, thanks, man. All right. But, uh, as right. we were going to say, uh, yeah, we want to discuss, want to discuss what's going on in the comedy world, 
And uh, Evan, Evan Weiss, since you have a degree in journalism, you're going to be our news correspondent. Yes, so, our uh, resident news correspondent. <laughs> and now here's the news with Evan Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> Uh, an article I saw Stage Time magazine online. Are you gonna keep playing it or? It <laughs> <laughs> was very a short attention span as it is. Uh, it says stand up comedy crutches, uh, top hack phrases to avoid. I'm just gonna go over. It's written by Josh Homer. Um, the top ten phrases. This guy knows what I mean, or it's brother. You know what I'm talking about, right, brother? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What it just turned into What's an old that? episode Come of on, like all in the family. Why you uh, what? What I do? What do you mean? If I know what I mean, is that the hack phrase? Right. Too soon. Number two is too soon. Was that too soon? You're going too fast. These what was the first the one? Yeah, we go back to the first one. The first phrase. This guy knows. This guy knows what I mean. Or brother, you know what I'm talking oh, about. When you joke bombs, you say. So all right. So you so say off- something you're trying to relate to the guy yeah. in the audience. You know, this guy knows what I mean. What do you guys? You guys agree or disagree? Ooh, That's- what does Danny Carroll uh, say? Like that? Yeah, Danny. It sounds like something you would say if you're bombing on stage. <laughs> really? Yeah, does it? Shut uh, the hell up, Danny. All right, uh, it's all common sense. Zyklon B. Now, where was this? Where was? It, where did you see this again? This, this was an article. Stage Time magazine online. St- um, is, that, what, is that StageTimeMag.com? Yeah. Okay. That's magazine. That's a good, excellent that website. Stands up for comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's a good website. I've read some articles there for myself. Uh, this magazine is written by Josh Homer, contributing editor. What's uh, number three there? Uh, number three is, ladies, uh, fellas, are you with me? Mm, often you do hear that. Yeah. Often. Fellas, are you with me? <laughs> Aren't these girls just crazy? <laughs> Guys are crazy. A lot of hot. Uh, is it me? They can't women. take a punch. <laughs> a lot of hot bitches in the crowd, right? What? That's on if there? You know what I mean. That's what it says? It says no. hot. Stick to the copy, all right? Uh, stick to yeah. The copy, all right. <laughs> Read the news. Uh, number four. Um, <laughs> uh, so, what else do I want to talk about? That is that is pretty. I hear hack. a lot of these bad open mics. Lines or the top hack five hack segues. Top five hack lines. Hack of all phrases hack to phrases. avoid. Oh, I thought they meant like hack jokes. I'm I'm waiting for you to say like a hack. I see what you're saying. No, like, I think these are mechanical. Like these are mechanical things that comedians do. Yeah, like over he, and over that are considered hack. Like oh, Evan yes. said, these so, are crutches, crutches for people. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do I want to talk he, he about? Phrases. Right. They're more like crutches, like. Um, like if someone goes up on stage to trying new stuff out, and they go, "Oh, this is just something I want to just uh, uh, throw out there. I can throw that joke out." Uh, number five is I can throw that joke out, like a new joke or something. Doesn't work. It's more like open mic material, right there. Yeah. Same thing with number four, which was. Would you want what to else say am Marcus? I going to talk about? Yeah. What? <laughs> Monty's still on the line. Monty, did you, Monty, you didn't <laughs> fall asleep yet? Again, we're going to apologize again. <laughs> we're, kill, we're killing Monty. Yeah, Evan's yeah, just going over his set. Let me do another. Let me get my spike ready and do another spoon <laughs> arrow. <laughs> Holy oh, I love this guy. Yeah, it's classic. I, I do believe that uh, uh, when Mr. White speaks about those phrases and you use them as crutches, I would say that there are times when, even though they are crutches, they are necessary. To, to, they are necessary. Um, Segways. You can. They can be used, but they can't be the bulk of your delivery. Well, I would say. This so you don't think they're hack? The way guys, you see, you know the problem is guys don't know how to set up jokes like the old. You see, a lot of guys today they're smoking mirrors, and they're, they're they're trying to be Dane Cooks, or they're trying to do all this energy, and they don't have the setups. Mm-hmm. So they'll go into the crowd. Hey, how many people are you married? You know, you you look like you're married. Well, then they do a married joke. Yeah. See, there's, there's, there's an art form of like of setting up jokes and getting things going. You know. And uh, that's that's what the problem is now. I've seen it with a lot of young guys here. I mean, it's I mean, there's some talented guys. This guy Sebastian and, and Brent Ernst. He's from the, the Vince Vaughn movie that made only five hundred grand. If you guys know that, no. Uh, that oh, his movie. Wild West show. Oh, it tanked. It tanked. Yes. It's, it's, it's because <laughs> these guys did not bring it. I'm not saying. Listen, I don't want to be like. I mean, I remember when I first started doing comedy. The guys like you know. Uh, um, you know, like, uh, who was it, like, Dangerfield, and there was, like, uh, what was it, Carter, what's his name, um... Jimmy Carter? No, Jay no, Kaplan? no, no, it was, it was a old stand-up, man. These guys would say, uh, you, you know, oh, Buddy Hackett was another, I saw Buddy Hackett throw a glass of water at, um, uh, Bobcat Goldways, because he goes, your kind of comedy is not real, Mike, you know, 
there's no punchlines, you know. Hey, is that really wet in here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, and I don't want to. I don't want to sound like, hey, you know, I'm the old guy that hey, these young kids don't know what they're doing. But it, it, <laughs> with that internet and that, cars, that, that, that's an art form. Ma- funny, Molly, if you don't mind me asking, funny. Molly, if you don't mind me asking, you're speaking from from experience. Tell the people how long you've been doing comedy, so they know that you're giving them some real wisdom here. Twenty years. Wow, almost as long as Evan. <laughs> I mean, 20 years, He's 20 years without a day job, my friend. There you All go. Right. Now, that's yeah. something we, we spoke earlier about real quickly. 20 years in the business, doing comedy, bringing the funny to people. When did you begin to call yourself a professional comedian? Uh, about five years ago. Really? <laughs> that's it? <laughs> five years ago? I mean, I knew when I got up there, and when I, as soon as I hit the stage, I knew I was given a show. Right. I mean, there was no hack stuff. There was no yada yada yada, and uh, I mean, oh. it, it was it was working. So but you can see I yourself mean, a comedian just because you're not doing hack anymore. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, everybody's got. Hey, listen, you know what? I I I advertise myself when I talk to guys. They say, Look, you got to be like a Christmas. I mean, a, a wedding dress. Something you know. What does it go? Some old, something new, something bald, something blue. Yeah. Okay, that's a com- that's comedy. That to me. Yeah. I mean, every. I mean, nobody's going to come up. You're not going to tell me you're coming up with a concept, a new thing, or a new joke. They're all been done. All of them. Been done. It's how. It's how you twist it. How you twist it out of your soul. So you got these cylinders, these comedy cylinders in your soul, and you got these personalities that you need to bring out on stage. And those are the guys that hit the home run all the time, like the Kennison, like the uh, Drew Carey, Jim Carrey, Tim Allen, Roseanne. I mean, there was a lot of fat chicks, you know. Uh, making bread at home, but they weren't funny. But Roseanne brought it to the table, you know? That's so it, yeah. it, sure. it, it, you can, you can talk. See, my, my problem, what I'm saying, smoke and mirrors, everybody's doing the, you know, if you, uh, every black comic has to come out dancing and he humps a chair. That's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you really got to stop doing every, that, Marcus. Every black comic, now all these white hip cop guys, are doing, so everybody comes out, that's the main thing. Oh, I got to hump a chair. Every, oh, hey, I'm the creator. Marcus, <laughs> when you said that. <laughs> well, you know, I I mean, in my day, it was going. the guys doing the arms bit. Every freaking comic came out and got somebody from the audience and put your arms through. Hey, this is something my creative. Well, go back oh, and watch Abner Costello, you moron. I could still, I, I, could, I just saw it done last week. Now, uh, yeah, but it kills. I mean, I mean, you're entertaining yeah, the crowd. Or, isn't that your job? You're entertaining them. Yeah, but you want to be original. You want to be yourself. Integrity, right? right? You have to have some integrity. Okay. Hey, hey listen. You, whatever it takes to define the character. When as soon as you find that character, you say, when 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 do you feel like you're a comic? It's when you own that stage and you own what you bring to the stage. Right. None of the stuff that you're bringing up there has been done. In, in your mind, you know, I mean, it's all, it's all you, it's all you creating up there. That's, that's when you realize that you're a cop. You're going to do the hack stuff. You're going to do a song parody. You're going to do uh, a magic. T- I mean, you, like you, I, like you said, you do anything to get laughs and that's what you do. Do, right. but, do, you, do you think anything is off limits? Uh, I, I think anal sex with a midget. <laughs> I mean, I would stay away from that. That's Tim Thompson's yeah, day. Jesus job. Christ, yeah. man. They're just this is describing like, my Thursday. I, you know what? Um, That's my signature you know, bit. Guys can't say the N-word, you know? And uh, I think, what's off limits, man? You know what? You know what's off limits? Not knowing your audience. And don't, when you're, when, see, that's the whole thing. A lot of guys don't understand that you've got to know your audience. And there's never a, a bad audience. There's bad comics. Never blame the audience. Is that, is that would that be a good rule of thumb? That's my main rule. If you're, you know what, you, I'll, you, you, you get them. You, you know, if you're, if you're, if listen, if you come into a, a room where you know it's like say sixty and above, you're playing Laughlin, Nevada. You're going to be playing crowds. I'd say from about maybe forty-five to about sixty, seventy. Right? That's the age limit. So you come in. You can't do, you know, drug jokes. I mean, you can't do a hip hop stuff. You know, you got to do stuff that you know that, that can relate to these people. So you got you got to be creative. You know, I mean, they're they're coming in to laugh. Right. And then you, I, I've, I've worked with some of the guys out of the audience. Suck. They say like, hey, they didn't suck. You suck. Sure. You 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 got to know with the audience. Watch your audience. That's that's why I tell every comic. You know, get to the show early. Don't. 
Don't come early to watch the pussy coming in. Watch the crowd that comes in. See who's coming in. And see where they're sitting. Get an idea who's sitting where. The ages. This is what I do. And I see who's sitting where. And then when I'm on stage, when I hear the laughter coming from a certain part of the crowd, I know who's there. I know what kind of people are sitting there. They're going to be older people, or they're going to be a group of chicks, or they're going to be a bunch of guys, young guys. And so I'll know how to, like, okay, now I know, all right, I got these guys. I know where I can bring these guys. Now I got to get these guys over here to come. And then, then, you, turn, then you turn it into an audience. All right, that's true. Hey, right, we're talking to Monty Hoffman, comedic legend, here on NobodyListensToUs.com. Monty, I know you did some acting. Uh, of course, Saved by the Bell, a huge fan. Right. That's when I first... Do you enjoy acting more than stand-up? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, uh, I don't know. No. You see, you get the rush from the stand-up, but the acting, acting, you know, when it comes down, it's work, man. You know, and it's like, uh, I think the, the rush of acting is getting the job. But as soon as you get the job, like, all the tension is gone. Mm. You know, it's like, because you, know, you work real hard for the audition, and then you got to see the other guy. Like I said, you first first you go to, into the, the, the first you see the lesbian, the lesbian sends you to the gay guy, and then the Jew hires you. So it's you know, that's, 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 that's uh, LA show uh, business. They know? do control everything. Well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bottom line. I mean, but uh, yeah, I think I, got, I used to get uh, real excited about when I left an audition. How good I felt, but then it came to the point where I had to let him go because I thought, oh, I killed in there, or. I did great in there. I'm going to get this. And then, you know, and then the ones that I thought I sucked in, I would get. So, mm. um, but then when you get on the set, it's a whole different animal. You're, um, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're you know, you're, you're, you're becoming history. I mean, you're going to always be on TV. You know, you're going to be part of something that's uh, always going to be there, you know, no matter what, you know, through time, you know? So, uh, I, what I did, I had no acting skills. When I hit LA, it was like I was on stage one night. That's why I tell everybody. I mean, maybe not in Long Island. It, it doesn't even matter where you're. I mean, this has happened to me in the middle of the desert. An NBC studio executive was uh, <laughs> just playing golf in, whole, <laughs> in this um, in Mesquite, Nevada. Okay. And I was doing a show, and he said, hey, man, we got this pilot we want you to read for. And I said, great. I mean, after my show. So, I mean, you'll never know who's going to be in the audience. So always have bring your A game. Even if there's ten people in the audience, I always I strongly believe there might be somebody in that audience who's looking for a comic for a show or a gig or something, or there's somebody who's like this is their last like chance at maybe redemption in life or just wants to laugh because their whole their life sucks. You know, I mean, homeless people seem better than them. You know, Monty, and, I, I would like to know uh, when you when you came to twenty years in the business. When you came into the business, did you have what you would call a comedy goal, for instance, where, listen, this is what I want to do with this comedy field. This is where I want to take it to. And if so, was it the same as it is t today that it was when you began? No. I mean, I, it's funny. I was talking to some girls last night about that. Um, I, I wish I knew what I did now when I first got into the business. I wish young guys would listen. I mean, but, you know, you can't tell anybody what's going on. I mean, you've got to figure it out. I mean, what I would tell people is, like, the comedy is your job. Look at it as a job. It's not a place where you have a beer on stage. You don't do a couple of lines of coke. Right. You don't smoke any reefer. You don't go after the pussy. You just let everything, you know, you, uh, you, you know. The, listen, you don't chase pussy. When you become famous, the pussy chases you. Right, but I'm saying. What? <laughs> when is this? And how does it happen? Wait, do wait a minute. Up? No, no, no. No, uh, I'm saying, I mean, I'm, no, no. I mean I, I, shit, man. It's like, that was the thing. Like, you know, it's, it's just the age old saying. I mean, you know. You go to a comedy club, you don't fuck the waitress. So if, if I can say that, on, you, can, you can curse, right? No, no, sure. no. sure, you can right. curse. You can but curse. The, uh, uh, you a money just, bucket, you have to put it in afterwards. That's now. right. 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 But I'm just saying, I mean, there's you know, this, this simple rules. And the guys I know that made it were the guys that kept it in their pants. They kept it kind, kind of clean on stage. I mean, basically clean. And, but they developed the character up there. And it was a character that everybody liked. I mean, from the club owner to the waitresses to the, the people in the audience. Um, and then that's the guy. It's like, I wish I would have, like, I always, I, I always took everything as a challenge in the beginning. You know, I thought, oh, oh you know, you're a comic, you know, screw you, you know. 
you're not as funny as me, and blah, you know, and I didn't make as many good friends that I, you know, I pissed off some really big people in the business. I mean, guy, I mean, Judd Apatow, I mean, I used to tell him to fuck himself, he wasn't funny. Oh, really? Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was, so, yeah, that's that was that a mistake. Well, that, that leads me to some questions then. Uh, <laughs> what do you do in this business here, Apatow. a budding comic and... Being a comic, it's kind of hard for us to shut our mouths. I think that's why we're comics. We just right. run our mouths all the time. And now you're in this business where you're you're in show business. You have to, you know, keep your mouth shut. How how do you do that, and still, you know, hold that, um, you know, hold yourself. As soon as you get the paycheck, go home. Yeah, that's it. Where's the paycheck? That's exactly? it. You don't get, you know, you don't get drunk okay. in the club. You don't talk. To, I I really believe you find a couple of guys. Like what you guys are doing. You guys like the two or three of you guys there? Actually, I mean, yeah, obviously, you, you got along with each other. You said, hey, let's do a show and, right. and blah, 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 right? right. So, so you see where you guys can develop this. You know, see where, you know, you, you got the main thing you got to do is check your ego. Everybody, you know, I, you hear that a million times, but some guys can't do it, man. Like I had this, I had this guy that wanted to do this tour with me and this guy, and he just didn't know. It was... He didn't know how to stop it. He didn't know when to turn it off. Now, you mentioned earlier a bit about uh, keeping it clean, but it is clear that if people who know who have seen your act that you do blue humor. It's dirty, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. have you ever Have you ever felt that you're being held back due to the case that, or due to the fact that you do do that, you know, the little yeah. vulgar stuff? Doo-doo. Yeah, because, you know, that was that was my crutch. <laughs> doo-doo. <laughs> yeah. No, the doo-doo, I did do <laughs> But uh, no, I, it, it was a crutch, for, you know, and I didn't realize it because, uh, like I said, it was my crutch. It was like, you know, I knew that if I got into the pussy jokes, you know, or the, uh, you know, the pussy fart thing, I said, oh, they laugh. But my writer, see, I got uh, Tim Allen's writer writes for me now. Really? Okay. And, oh. she, and she's a woman. And so, like, she said, listen, yeah, it's funny, but they're not liking you. They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. So, like, we're trying to clean it up. And I've been, like, and I've done, like, about ten shows now where I haven't done the pussy stuff. Wow. And, and, it's, and it's a whole different ballgame. I realize that if I used to go to... Did you get the, the ten show chip? Is that what you just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, I get a chip. <laughs> yeah, I get a chip. The, the, the anti-pussy chip. <laughs> You know, no pussy, not, not pussy chip. <laughs> but you know what? I'll tell you, it, it's it's so it's 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 so retarded, man. Like you get guys that say, "Hey, you can't you can't uh, you can't be dirty," but then as soon as guys get a name, it's you know what you know what I think it is. I think because of the internet and because of like, hey, listen, you had Jane Fonda saying "cunt." She did. On, uh, That's yeah, right. <clears throat> on morning TV. I mean, so it's not. There's no more shock in it. So why not be creative well, now? She is. Right, right. I don't but think I'm saying about comedy, so. there's no more shock value. I mean, you can go into town, and like I said, you have every black guy humping a chair and making like he's banging his... I mean, every guy is going up there doing dirty comedy now, and uh, it's not getting creative. So I, I would say right now, see, I'm, a, I'm a trend guy. Like, I was doing the dirty humor when nobody else was doing it, you know? Right. There's maybe a handful of guys that could get away with it, let's put it that way. Oh, Make joke. a living doing it. What's your favorite uh, dirty joke? Um, uh, let's see, I, I fucked this girl in the ass, and I hate doing that, because when you pull your dick out, there's like a piece of corn stuck to the head of your dick. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know? And listen, uh, girls, if you like getting fucked in the ass... Make sure you chew your food right. <laughs> it, it, you know, I don't want to have a cashew hanging from my fucking pee hole. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> but see, that's, that was the difference. Most of my dirty humor was it was like very true. It's I mean, I, like I would talk girl. about women coughing and your dick would pop out. You know, after you know having sex. And, and what may what 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 is your favorite clean joke there, Monty? Oh, oh you know that what, was I mean, the clean joke. <laughs> 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 um. I'm writing a lot of good stuff. Like I was saying, like, what was the one? I, oh, I said, you know, like, right, all my friends right now, they're getting uh, all this uh, plastic surgery. And, I, you know, I gotta, I just got to stay with what I got. I'm never going to change. The only way I can change now is if somebody plays me in a movie. You know? Yeah. So, so that's where I'm trying to see how I would suck. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Those dirty jokes are great. <laughs> but, no, I, you, know, you, you know, you put a twist on it. That was just, uh, it, it's like, 
Uh, it's a, uh, it's a clean jokes. I don't know. I don't, you're the operation uh, I, guy. That, that's I, the cleanest. Yeah, thing I, I think there's definitely a tre- like you said, a trend. There's been a pendulum pendulum swing towards the more the cleaner comics like Gaffigan and Brian Regan and right. those, those guys are getting a lot of attention just Ooh. because they work clean. You don't know who Jim Gaffigan I'm is? I'm teasing, Rob. He's a big they're silly. Gonna work, they're going to work. You know, they're they're going to get the big rooms. And, you know, it, you know, you know, I'll tell you what. New York and California is real, real liberal and open-minded, but there's a lot of country in between there. Yeah. What, I, what, yeah. Are you, what are your thoughts, though, when it comes down to getting that national exposure? We're talking about the big late-night shows from Letterman and, and Leno and those. What is your thoughts about that, making it to that sort of level but being held back because of the, the the dirty comedy, which you obviously can't do there. No, you can't. But you got you, if you can be edgy with a twist and be creative. That's what I would say. I say be as edgy as possible without um, you know without going over the you know the the, the line. I you know, you know who knows? Listen, funny's funny. I don't yes. care. Right. I mean, it don't matter. You got, if you're funny up there, it don't matter. I mean. Uh, Eventually, somebody's going to find a place for you. Yeah, Ma, good Ma, point. Can I, can I actually, do you notice over the past 20 years the different styles of comedy changing? Like uh, someone will m- m- talk about their real life and, and stuff Look, like oh, that. This is, this is the two big booms. When I first started, the two big booms that I've seen in my comedy career was when Robin Williams came on the scene. And all of a sudden, when he popped on the scene, every every comedy club was popping up because... Everybody wanted to see. He brought comedy to the mainstream with Mark and Mindy. Everybody wanted to know who this guy was. And this guy was all over TV doing stand-up, right? So now all of a sudden all these people are saying, wait, oh, there's other people that do this? Where do I, where do I see these guys? Oh, there's, you know, Boston and uh, San Francisco popped, Chicago. So all these, all these comedy clubs started popping up. And he brought the new wave of comedy, I call. And then the next one was Dane Cook. He brought all these people on MySpace, all these 10, 11 year old kids who have no idea what comedy was. They're sitting around jerking off the porno. I agree. And all of a sudden, and all of a sudden they got this guy. Wow, there was this funny guy on the video. Da, da, da. No, wait a second. You I mean agree. there are there are other guys that do this? Right. And he and he uh, and, and he brought it back to arenas. I mean, selling he out. Did. Yeah, I did. Absolutely. Well, he, just brought, he just brought a new wave of people to comedy again. And uh, there were, it got stagnant because uh, there was really the kids weren't getting into comedy. You got to so you got to get kids interested in comedy around twelve. You got to get twelve, thirteen year old guys interested in comedy, yeah. and then they're watching it on the internet yeah. or they're watching it on comedy. And then when they hit yeah. twenty one yeah. years old, they're raring to go to their comedy club. I tried to right. do that, but then I wound up on Dateline, right. like the cigarette company. Hook <laughs> them while they're young. Yeah, right, yeah. We're listening to Monty Hoffman, comedic legend, here on NobodyListensToUs.com. NobodyListensToUs.com. Monty, what's yeah. your website? What uh, website are you using now? Oh, uh, fuckme.com. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that must have been easy to get. It's I'm Monty. not into this shit. I swear to God. I got MontyHoffman.net, Monty. but I haven't upgraded it in, like, you know, who knows. I had my friend taking care of it. I got a MySpace. Ooh, MySpace. Uh, um, I, put, uh, I got a girl that puts so. videos on there for, of the stuff I do. Trying to get um, the young boys. I bet the stuff understand. she does. I'm it's... looking for pussy on the internet. I'm not showing comedy. But I thought it I comes mean. to you. I mean, what? what? You know what? Um, I don't care if they come and see me. All right, Monty Hoffman giving up on our show. For <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I'm in, all right, I'm in Tucson, Arizona in two weeks. I'm at last. Where are you? Uh, uh, yeah. That's Tucson. And, okay. um, right. and let me see. That's all I got for the whole year. When you come back to the island, Monty? I got to talk to some people. I'm looking maybe to try to come back in the summer, but like I said, you know, with this strike going on, the main thing I came back was to do the acting again. I mean, uh, I'm not, you know, and I got to get back into the, the, the local clubs here. So I'm not really looking to go on the road. Like I said, if I can get this, tour, I think we're going to do a big show in uh, Ashbury Park. Me, nice. Mike Marino, and this nice. guy, Tommy yeah. T. We'll try to get Danny DeVito to introduce us. Yeah. Maybe the Springsteen to come down. Uh, nice. We're getting, you know, wow. Yeah. That's Marino. Marino. Oh, did Marino tell yeah, you about Yeah, we're trying, well, not straight to play, but we're trying to get, like, this whole Jersey thing going. And, yeah, uh, hold on, huh? Yeah, we did a big show at the Ice House uh, last week, and 
and it really went well, and a lot of people are talking about it. That's that's what you got to do. And uh, I mean, listen, you know, I could I could drop a dime. Like when the money gets tight, I'll call somebody and say, "Hey, I need some work," and I I got the reputation. Somebody, will, you know, throw me a bone. So right, I got uh, you know, I what, what what had happened? August, this this mook asked me to do this tour with him, and he's telling me he's the greatest thing. You know, since sliced bread and comedy, and the guy was a fucking hat. He did you know, all that stuff you guys were talking about, talking to the crowd, blah, blah, blah. He did all that shit. And, like, I worked with him in Laughs, and I, and I quit the tour right then. I said, you know, you're a piece of shit, you know? Wow. And um, do you know his name? Do you want to see him there? Uh, all right, I'm just maybe, kidding. Maybe don't, he doesn't. Don't, I don't give a fuck. You know, there's some guy, you know, he told me he was on The Sopranos and blah, blah. But there's a lot of bullshit. Every time so, I mean, try to see him, he says that, really. <laughs> So what I happened, I, I put a lot of faith in this guy, and I, so I didn't do any booking for like six months. I figured we were going to do all these gigs, and then, so, I mean, hey, you know, it's, 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 it's never the end of the world. You, know, you, you always make it up. Yeah, Monty, you mentioned that you mentioned being affected by the strike. How did that affect you? They want to know if you, do you mean Mook as in black person? No, no, <laughs> no Mook. Did you ever watch? You ever watch uh, really Mean Street? Stupid. Yeah, Mean Streets. Did you ever watch? Yeah, Mook, Mook, Schmuck. What's a Mook? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Monty. Tell us. <laughs> you offended Marcus. I, uh, nah, a Mook to me is a, 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 a guy that, that talks a big. Big game and he got nothing. Right. Like That's dummy. exact. Go watch Mean Streets. You mean Marcus. a dummy. You'll know, yeah. you'll know exactly what he's doing. Eric Roberts in the, the Pope of Greenwich Village. Yeah. Is, right, uh, exactly. That's a move. That, that's where they got. That, they broke my phone. <laughs> We're okay with the racial slant, though, if you want to. It's okay. Oh, the colors? I love yeah. the colors. <laughs> you love their chair humping moves. Yeah. Yeah, I love the kids. Like so, the so Monty, you, you were affected you by You know the thing with the black guys I really don't like, though? So I'll be honest with you. <laughs> no. With your daughter? What? No, no, no. I'm getting tired of hearing this restitution shit. You know, for slavery. Rep, rep, you know? Rep, reparation, Monty? <laughs> well, no, no. What is it? Reparation? Reparation. You know what I say about reparation? What? What's that, Monty? Just, just keep the shit you stole and we'll call it even. <laughs> That's a killer joke. You tell that one often, Ma? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus. That goes over well? We oh, have Oh, Marcus. Monty Hoffman is available for corporate gigs. Does that yeah. go over well, Monty? Listening Marcus? to Jet? We have two Jews, Jews here. The Don't end. leave out the Jews. Okay. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. Where's the two Jews? Oh, that's right. Better recognize. Oh, it's funny. I got, I'm, I'm living in a Jewish neighborhood here, Valley Village. And, uh, yeah. and, hey, uh, Mazel Tov. Uh, so every up, Saturday, you know, they got to walk to Temple, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. No, yeah. Nobody drives or nothing. And this one guy, he always asks me to shut off his air conditioner for him and stuff. <laughs> they can't do it. So anyways, every time they're walking down the street, I go off from a ride. They get so pissed off. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull the car over. Say, I'll give you a ride to the Temple. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like they look at me like, I'm out of my freaking mind. You were the nicest <laughs> Gentile ever. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, come on, no, I'm a nice guy. I ain't gonna, no, I'll drive it. You should be walking. I don't know why I can't kids. get gigs. <laughs> <laughs> you got all the kids. Come on, put them in the back. I got car seats. <laughs> what about those Irish? <laughs> no, I know nothing about them. Well, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Irish. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the Irish wedding. Yeah, you may punch the bride. Um, <laughs> All right, what, what races do we have left in the room? Uh, Italians? No, I'm, not, yeah. you know, I'm really not a racist comic. You know, listen, if I, you know, like it's, uh, you know, you know, it's the first thing you you got to do when you say a black joke, right? What? First look, thing is, you got to look around. Yeah, look around. Look around. Yeah, that's, uh, well, yeah, no, I think that's, oh, that's oh, on the hack okay. list, by oh, the way. Just, is that, uh, that's number seven on the hack list? <laughs> yeah. I, wait, 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 if um, a black guy and a Mexican are in a car, who's driving? The cops. There you go, the I'm, I'm sorry to step all over that, but geez, that one's got whiskers. All right, that's. <laughs> we have a couple. We have a couple of people on the line. I don't know if they want. Oh, to really? Ask Monty, yeah. any questions? Oh, we got to cut Monty off. No, no. Some people want to talk to you, Monty. Maybe, maybe. Some people want to talk to Monty. I think maybe they want to go to somebody. I'm gonna. Else. We have. Uh, maybe we, get some we have our friend. We have our friend Donnie, and we have uh, somebody from New York, unidentified person from New York. So. All right. Well, why don't we? Uh, why don't you talk to Donnie first? Well. Let's see if Dottie wants to say anything. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Dottie. What are you wearing? You there, Dottie? Well, I'm, I'm wearing a T-shirt and jeans. Oh, Nothing no. uh, like exciting, guys. Sorry. Well, hi, Dottie. You're live on NobodyListensToUs.com. You're talking to uh, comedic legend Monty Hoffman. Oh, I'm thrilled. 
you like a hooker on New Year's. Oh How are you, God. baby? Oh, well, really yeah. good. I, I look forward to that. It sounds good. I haven't had any action in a long time. All uh, right, I'll wash my fist. Yeah. <laughs> She's a regular <laughs> dust bowl. Wrong. So you got any questions, Dottie, or are we going to hang up on you? You're going to hang up on me? No. Yeah, Dottie, you're bringing questions. nothing to the table what right now. Questions? You got any questions for, for Monty? Talk into the mic. Comments? Yes, anything? I do. Uh, you know, Monty? Yeah, Hi. Uh, my name's Dottie, and I'm new in comedy. I just started last spring. And okay. um, any advice you can give to a woman who's uh, beyond middle age? I'm in my 50s, and I find that Kill people yourself. look at me, and they just kind of back away. I got a great story. Uh, Grandma Lee, you ever hear of her? Uh, no. Uh, Grandma Lee, she's 80 years old. Uh, hurricanes wiped out her house. Her husband died. She was very depressed. Went to a comedy club and said, boy, I'm funnier than these guys. And just started doing comedy. So, I mean, there's no, listen, you know, like, here, here here's some of my cliches for people our age that are doing comedy. See, if Red Fox didn't get a series till he was 65. He was doing comedy. Uh, you know, I, I saw George so Burns doing comedy at 100 years old. So uh, my advice to you is, uh, you know, find out who you are. And I tell every woman comic, I mean, I, uh, you know, just open your mind and keep your legs closed. You know, and uh, that's what I, I just tell you. I mean, you can do it. Nobody can tell you what not to do and, and what you should do. Don't worry. You're going into a young field, but then again, you have wisdom. You have experience. Yeah, if Hillary Clinton could do it, Dottie, so can you. Yeah, Hillary. Make him laugh, Dottie. Hillary, make him laugh. I don't think she's doing comedy, Hillary though. Clinton. I said, what are you doing up. comedy, Dottie? What am I doing? Oh, where? My, where? What do you mean? Where? Oh, where? On Long Island? Suffolk, mostly. And what I have, uh, I have a room in uh, the Grind Coffee Shop on the first and third Monday of each month. Yeah. Uh, now you, uh, yeah, you three guys got a job now. <laughs> now she just she just lives there. She doesn't do comedy. There, so. oh, she makes you They have good scraps there for her. Give me, give me one of your jokes, Dottie. Oh, I have a kid that disrupts my class every day. Every day he farts. Okay. I tried to teach him a lesson, but I shit my pants. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> that's oh, good. Ad- that's good advice, <laughs> Dottie. Tell him the joke we worked on uh, a couple of weeks ago. The, the your opening joke. Oh, I teach you. Oh, you, guys, to- oh, you guys know Dottie. This is a oh, setup. Yeah, oh, we know. No, no. Yeah, we know she Dottie. Dottie. She's the only person that calls. Actually, yes, we have a couple of people. We have a few others. That means we have to get rid of Monty. No, we get no, rid of no, Donnie. No, no. That's no. what it means. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a hundred dollars an hour to do this, so I'll give you a couple of freebies. Give me another one of your jokes. Okay, well, I teach in one of the roughest schools in New York City, mm. and our commencement speaker was Don King. Yeah, see, I would say I, I, I got a rough high school, you know. In, for, when we graduate, they take two pictures, a front shot and a side shot. <laughs> <laughs> steal it, Dottie, steal it. That's comedy. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That, you, know, you know what you got to do, Dottie? It's like you know, what I was saying earlier. Um, you, can just, you can do jokes about school. But tell people who you are first, Dottie. Okay. Let them know who you are, um, what you're about, um, how far you'll you'll go, and you know how far you know. That that's what I would do if I was you. Uh, of course, tell about talk about being a teacher and uh, use a, a real experience. Grab your real experiences, not guys that are farting and stuff. Grab something that was. Uh, I do have a student that farted every day. He inspired the joke. Right. Okay. There you go. Uh, but I'm saying. Uh, Instead of joking, call a doctor. You know, I, I would take other other products that that you know have to do with uh, more you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to say who you listen. You know what? You know what comedy is to me is like is like walking into a party of a hundred strangers, and in an hour they all know your name. Okay. You know they know who you are and what you are. You know what I mean? They, you got you got to open up. Like I told you, those cylinders. You got to. You gotta open them up and let them let them know your fears and uh, I mean it's a dark you gotta go into some dark areas but uh, you know those are the guys who hit it man I mean Tennyson was one of the darkest motherfuckers I ever met in my life I mean and, and he worked at I mean I knew Sam when he, he used to sleep on my couch and he used to you know he was a doorman and he would talk stuff and you're going whoa Sam you know 
We're all out there, dude. <laughs> Amani, w- Amani, when you when you offer up this advice, uh, at any time, do you consider the alternative? Uh, for instance, you, you you referenced Mr. Kinnison, but how about someone as Mr. Seinfeld, for that matter? Well, it, 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 it worked for him. Don't you understand? People love Jerry. Right, but I'm saying it's it's not dark in any way, shape, or form. So to say, well, he's, he's honest to himself. It might not be. Well, dark that might or, be dark to him. Don't you understand? It's it's honest. Are, to, yeah. These yeah. these are his phobias. That's right. That about. that pubic hair on the shower it's, stall. That's right. Scary. That might be a real phobia. To that's him. scary. You know, this, you, you know what I'm saying? This it's is true to his personality. Right, right, right. It has to do with fears. And most of it is like we're making fun of our fears because that's what we're trying to conquer up there. Right. I mean, just to get up on stage is conquering it. I mean, you, you know, you know how many guys, you know, that you know, somebody says, "Oh, you're funny, man." You know, why don't you try do an open mic? And you see, they freeze on stage. I mean, it's a whole, it's a, a whole different animal, man. So and, by and, dark, by dark, by any means, you don't mean uh, a oh, vulgar Marcus. or anything like that. By, no, by dark, no, you don't I mean you, you, you've got you've got to you, you, you're going to you face emotions that you know only you know. Do so you have? We each have things that we know about ourselves yes. that nobody knows about unless they can read our mind, right? Okay, things that we think about, uh, things that we really believe in that we can't talk about, right? Now you got to take that stuff and make fun of that stuff. That's, that's dark stuff I'm right. talking about. That's the funny. <clears throat> that's where the funny comes from. Because yeah. all of a sudden you're releasing all this crap inside you and then you're creating from it and that's that's when i think the real comedy comes right. that's when i see guys like finally like making it i mean they when you do vova stuff i call the vova stuff it's like the stock lines and the the hack material it's safe you'll do cruise ships but man you'll never you'll never know the feeling of just like telling your soul to an audience and they're going they're laughing at it going yeah man you go, whoa, yeah. They know yeah, how I feel. They, right. they know who I am, you know? Hey, Monty, Monty we got another caller. I don't know. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you. Yeah, thank hey, you. Thank you, Donnie. You're welcome. Hang up. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got uh, Brian. Brian on the line. Hey, Brian. How are you? Yeah. Thanks for listening. Nobody Hello. listens to us. Hang on. Hang on. There he is. Hello. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's Brian. going on? Up, hey, Brian. Uh, this seems pretty cool. I, never, I, I don't know. I just came home and caught this. Oh, yeah? Where are you from, yeah. Brian? Yeah, so, and so I'm, from, uh, I'm from Long Island. I, uh, I perform, you know, McGuire sometimes. All right. So, oh, yeah, you're a comic guy. Yeah, I've seen you. Yeah. So you I, just um, click this, huh? So, so you and the chimpanzee. <laughs> no, I, I, did, uh, I did two uh, two mics today, and I just came home, and uh, I went to Dottie's two? room in Belmore, when and you, I oh. drove. You put them both yeah. where? What, like two mics, you put one in the front and one in the back? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. you two, yeah, if you're with two guys named Mike, it doesn't mic. count, right? You blew two mics. So you got a question for uh, comedic legend Monty Hoffman? No. Well, well not what? really. Uh, yeah. Did you, like, how long did it take you before you became, like, just a working comic, like, to support yourself? Like, I'm not trying to... I don't know. How long oh, I, got my, I got my first paid gig in five, I think five years. You got to look at comedy. When you start comedy, you got to look at it. Do you ever go to college? I'm in college, actually. Okay, so it's like going back to college. You're going to put five years in, and then you're going to, you know, you're going to, put, you're going to get your degree. You're going to get your bachelor degree in comedy after like four years of, you know, doing the open mics and finding. And by the fifth year, you start making a couple of paydays. You know, you you, you run into guys. Because that's when you start going for your masters, you know. Uh, it really is like going to college because you're you're, you're 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 learning the hard knocks of the business, you know. And yeah, yeah. I'll t- I would I would just like I said I would do as many open mics as I can. I would do shows anywhere I can for four years, and then all of a sudden, like you you, you got to find like I say that character that uh, everybody laughs at, you know. It's a it's like like when you like they were talking about Jerry Seinfeld, like like you talk to Jerry off stage, he's He's nothing like, you know, the, the Seinfeld guy. And, you know, then again, me too. I'm not the guy, on, you know, I'm not the, the Monty Hoffman on stage that when I'm, you know, like just talking to you on the phone. So you got to find that persona, that comedy, your comedy persona. You know, that there's a guy inside of you that just makes, 
makes yourself laugh all the time. That's the guy you got to look for all the time. And then when you find him, you bring it on stage. And it, I'd say five years is a good time to find. Him. If you don't find it in five years, try to become a manager. <laughs> oh, uh, a manager of rent a center uh, No, no, comic. I'm a manager. I'm a manager now. Hey, Brian, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, like two and a half, almost three years. Did you? Right. Did you win any contests? But you, um, you have a website. I'm Brian. a Flyers Long Island's funniest person contest. Uh, I won it last year. That's like oh, that's being there. Nice. Good job, Brian. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a beginning. I mean, I mean, it's, that's something that you. You can say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in the right direction. You know? Yeah, I know, but, like, it just it feels like I'm not getting anywhere still. Like, I, I won the contest, and I thought maybe, like, I'd have an in to the club. And if you know McGuire's, if you've been there and you've talked uh, to John Ayers. You see, now you're right, talking. Calm down with your bitterness. And this, this <laughs> two different, you're talking two different animals. You you know, volatile, you got to, you got to, it's the boys' club, baby. You know, uh, that's all I got to tell you, man. The old boys' club or the boys' club, man? <laughs> it can be either way. Depends on which way you bend. You know, well, that's I, you the know, gay boys' club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's you know, it, it's like you got to be around. You got to show them. You know, I mean, you got to bring them money. But right now, club on it's, it's all about money. If you bring people to the club, they'll work. You know. Yeah. That's that's all I got to tell you. Especially in the beginning, it that's what that's what it is. You, you know what? I'll give you some great. Don't get involved with anything anybody else is doing. You know what I mean? Don't give a shit who's doing what. Don't 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 don't. Uh, you know, somebody's doing gigs and you're not doing them. Don't don't get don't get mixed up with it. Just just focus on who you are and what you're doing. That's so when you start worrying about other people's careers, then you're totally fucked. You know, yeah. then then it's like it. Then you know the shit don't become fun anymore. You know, because you you get all tweaked out. You get bit. You you, you turn you twenty five year old bitter, a twenty five year old bitter guy, and that ain't fun, man. That's yeah. not attractive, Brian. Don't do that. It'll come yeah. along just like puberty. So, so, Brian, you said you were at two open mics today. Yeah, I actually, uh, Marcus, I actually uh, took your spot. I think. I know, <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the show's already helping a comedian. That's good. Yeah. All right, thanks, Brian, for that, calling. That's the spot I wasn't allowed yeah, to be on. Swell. Oh, geez, so funny. Bitter little bad. Bad. Come down. Tim, we've got somebody in New York. I think might want to ask Monty a question. All right, New York, you're on the web with Monty Hoffman. Uh, nobody listens to us. dot com. How are you, New York? Hi there. Yeah. Hey. Uh, uh, yeah, Monty. Uh, your, yeah. Your experience oh. with the uh, Sparky. Uh, <laughs> The what? Yeah. Yeah, it's Sparky. Hi. Sparky, um, what are you doing, man? Yeah. You, you still not, did they institutionalize you yet? Not yet. Not yet. Right. It's, it's, uh, uh, they're the worst, you know. Yeah. Um, your last comic is a standard experience. Uh, you, you, you do very well with that. I thought that, you know, um, again, we're dealing with the politics and all that type of stuff. But, uh, um, how, how do you... What are you talking about, man? Take the fucking <laughs> Actually, yeah. we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about Last Comic Standing in general, and yeah. we want to ask Monty some specific oh, okay. things. But I think Sparky is asking you about uh, about uh, last uh, your last time. Personal com- Sparky, talk English. <laughs> like uh, I, I like Sparky. I, that's why I can. Everyone talk loves Sparky. Sparky's a lovable guy. Uh, he's a, he's a, he is. He is a good but, guy. He, but he fucking carries sharp weapons. You gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> you scare the shit out of everybody, Sparky. That's why you get gigs. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fear concept that I've mastered so well. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> we're, we're gonna... You can use me in your club, can't you? Can't you? Oh, God. <laughs> See, that's a factor we don't talk about. Intimidation. Getting into the clubs for intimidation. I have sharp right. objects. You're listening to NLTU. Nobody listens to us. <laughs> It's absolutely true, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> apparently it is. So, uh, so Monty, what, what, your, your first time on stage, how, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, what, what was your first, because uh, we all remember our first time. I was waiting. At, it was like the Holy City Zoo. I had signed up for an open mic. I was doing improv, and I thought I had the chops down. And then it was the Holy City Zoo, and I waited. And the guy put me on about five... The bar's closed at 2. This guy put me on about 5 minutes to 2. Shut the microphone off about 3 minutes to 2. I got off. I grabbed him by his neck and said, don't ever fucking do that to me again. 
and uh, the legend was born. <laughs> what a warm experience. <laughs> what a way to start the success. That's... Yeah, I mean, uh, back then, you know, but I just said, I was so pissed off, and this, it was a little creepy, dude, and I said, don't you ever fucking do that to me again. And then, you know, uh, he never did it to me again, but, uh, yeah. but, but I, but, like I said, but, uh, yeah, that was, it was, it was, it was rough. I mean, if, you know, when I first, I remember I was doing, um, old jokes, uh, uh you know, I, I, you know, I remember my first joke, I, I, it's so funny, I found a tape of when I first, and I used to do this thing, I used to go on stage, uh, I used to put my hand around my head, I used to go, this is a headlock, and then I put my arm behind my back, I go, this is an armlock, and I grab my dick, this is a pole lock. <laughs> that, was, that was my that was my killer ending. Oh man! Wow! Fun, and you still use that? I gotta write this down. Hold on. Oh no. wow! Man. It's been a great talk about talk to material. You. Even if worse. You know is what I you mean? Off. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Okay. So. All right. Hey, Monty, can you hang out a little while? We're going to talk about last comic. If you can't, it's all right. We're going to we take gotta, a short break. <laughs> we got to take a break, and we'll uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. To talk You've been about listening last. to Monty Hoffman, comedic legend here on NobodyListensToUs.com, our first show. On NPR. NPR. We're going to take a small <laughs> <laughs> NPR. From coast to coast. Oh, yeah. man. Let's just lose it right now. No, all right. Let's all do people. lines. But, uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to hear a short ad from a uh, local legend. Angry. 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 Local angry legend. Hi, I'm Angry Bob. Angry Bob, a very funny comedian from New York City. We came up with this ensemble. We like to call this burritos at 4 a.m. <laughs> but masturbating to reruns of the monsters. <laughs> Audiences love me. I know from Titty Sweat. <laughs> and they always want to know, how can they take a little of this home? There's a lot of Angry Bob to go around. But now there's even more. With this, the new talking angry bobblehead. No expense was spared in the design and construction of this fabulous angry bob collectible. It's anatomically correct. That's right. No penis. Made by our friends in China by professional Asian craftsmen. Work harder now. What are they saying on the street? About the talking angry bobblehead. Since I got my angry bobblehead, my yeast infection cleared up. Since I've got my angry Bob bobblehead, I've become ruler of Atlantis. Bobblehead math. <laughs> Ever since I got my angry Bob bobblehead, I'm getting laid all the time. Don't touch my <laughs> I love touching the angry bobblehead. I am a very wealthy man. I live a life of opulence. I have wasted millions of dollars, and all I have found is this childish tomfoolery. None of it can bring me the pleasure that I seriously want. But there is one thing that has brought true joy to my life. That thing is the angry bob bobblehead. As you can see, folks, I have invested everything into the angry bobbleheads. Where can you get your own talking angry bobblehead? No, you can't get it in any of those crappy places. You can only get it on the internet. That's right, folks. Just go to my website, www.angrybob.org. If you buy your angry bobblehead right now, get a free angry bob pet. Thanks, angry bob. This pet is great. Give me a roll, I'm a fucker off the value, bitch! Angry Bobblehead, buy yours today! Pen for writing, not for stabbing. We are back. You are listening to Nobody Listens to Us Com- Comedy Radio here on NobodyListensToUs.com. And with us is Monty Hoffman. You still there, Monty? No, this is Josh, uh, Josh Filipowski. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I have a room for you guys. <laughs> Finally, the show's working that out. That is funny. <laughs> Actually, My name is Josh Filipowski. <laughs> 
<laughs> Watch me dance. <laughs> Who is Josh Filipowski? Hey, he actually got know. a spot. Some guy that keeps emailing me from New York. He got me a spot. Yeah, right. He actually got a spot I was supposed to have last week. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about now a big thing in uh, the comedic world. Uh, last Comic Standing. You know about this, Monty, right? Yes, I do. And uh, recently they had a uh, tryout of auditions, a uh, cattle call actually, in uh, New York on the February 7th at Gotham Comedy Club. And it's also been in Miami and Detroit and Canada right. and all over the place. Right. Texas. And uh, first, before we start talking, I, w- I want to hear, what, what are your feelings about this? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this? You know, hey, listen, you know what? If you, if you, get, it, if you get in, it's a payday. I mean, we're all, you know what? I have my feelings. I have... I mean, realistically, we're all looking to be on TV. And you know what? When I did it, I was, uh, I saw the first year. I was asked to do the first year. Um, uh, this friend of mine, uh, she was producing the show. She was from Saved by the Bell. And she said, she called me up. She goes, I know you do comedy. We're doing this thing with Jay Moore. Which it's going to be like a reality show in the house. Would you like to do it? And I said, nah, that ain't my bag. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't do you know, reality shows, you know? And, uh. Then I watched it, and I was with my girlfriend, and I said, I said, you know what, they asked me to do this. And so I said, I said it's kind of hokey, but you know what she said to me? They're on TV, you're not. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so you got to put that, so that I use that as an example. And you know what? You know what? You do anything, you you do anything. Look, you go in the water and fuck fish if there's a career. You know? Uh, <laughs> so I, all I'd say is I'd do it. Uh, okay, off, whatever. Do it. Yeah, um, you know? Like, as a person on the internet is curious, uh, do you think it deteriorates from the art form of comedy? Last comics. Totally, it's 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 it, it, it's 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 a uh, it's um flavor of the month. But you know, it's a great thing about our you know our form, like not like any other like um, art form, is that we have a way of thinning out the herd. You know what I mean? You get guys, you, you get guys that you get girls that open their legs. I know girls who used to fuck guys and. And they got on the Tonight Show, and where they got sick. Of, but you know what? You never hear of them again. Uh, they got to work didn't. on the Tonight Show. <laughs> no, no. But you know what? When you when you see the main thing, the door's going to open for every comic. Is if it's a little door, or if it's a big door. But when that door opens, you have got to be ready. But one uh, one thing you said, you were asked to to do Last Comic Standing, and that kind of takes away. I mean, the show is marketed that these people are trying out. It's like an open right. for everyone, and yet you're at. I'm that talking seem like about a, the first year. First year, I was asked. But it seems... the, the, the second year, when I actually did do it, I have to admit, I made some phone calls, and I was put right, th- right in. Exactly. But you're not waiting online. All, all these poor no. jerks. Right, right, right. Well, He's talking about the fact that it's like all set well, up. It's pre-selected. Basically, yeah. yeah. They, they, they have gotten it down to a science of um, where they'll make oh. the people that are going to be the clowns, uh, the jokes of the show, right. wait on this line for hours and hours, and maybe... Sure. You get to do something, and meanwhile, there's another line of people going right in to see the the producers. Exactly. Has anyone made it from the line onto the show? I think the previous uh, winner, Willie uh, Willie Sacco, made it. Willie uh, Sacco. Man, Willie Sacco didn't make it onto the show, but he made the commercial. <clears throat> they really, yeah, they really used what? the hell out of him yeah. last year. Yeah. I got to tell you something. You know what? Uh, there's about ten or twenty guys, and they're all managed by certain people, and I'm they're the all wheeling and dealing, and that's who's yeah. going to do it. Omni what? Right. Omni Pop? Burger King. Burger King. Popular I don't know uh, that much with Omni Pop, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not Omni Pop. I mean, uh, you know, those guys are okay. I mean, you know, Tom, you know, hey, I'm having a party on the 4th. Come by. Uh, it's a great party. Um, great party. I've been there. It's great. Yeah, great party. But, you know, I think Tom's guys work for it. I'll, I'll, give, him, I'll give Tom that one. Uh, like Doug Benson. You know, that prick, you know. <laughs> oh. Who? Yeah. Don't let your feelings loose. Don't, I mean, yeah, see whatever you t- <laughs> let our feelings loose. No, I'm not just you. fucking around. Well, you know me. I'm just fucking around. But what I, what, if you really want to know what I feel? I yes. Say anybody, yes. do it. Do it. Do it. Because if you get, you might hit the home run. Who knows? But then again, it's it's you're going. It's like you're going into a card game, and the five guys at the table are all friends. Monty, are there any shortcuts in comedy? Uh, you got nice tits. He actually yeah. has a, a great pair of tits, to be honest. Yeah, I, what shortcuts are there? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's life, man. You know, it's, you know what? You know, you become friendly with somebody who has a club. There's a shortcut. You know, it's schmoozing. It's, I mean, it, listen. When I started comedy, there was like 500 guys who were legitimate comics working back in the early 80s. 
You had the guys from Make Me Laugh. You know, you had uh, you know, who were the main guys. You had Leno. You had Letterman. Um, who do you? Uh, who was something? Uh, Kipadata. Um, I know I'm naming guys you guys never heard of before. Um, Vic Dunlap. These guys were on a show called Make Me Laugh. And so when I started, there was like Slayton was a was a you know working you know beginning headliner. Dana Carvey. Um, Ellen DeGeneres, she was in San Francisco at the time, and, and uh, Paul. Pa- so what I'm saying is there was just a handful. So it was the clubs would fly the headliner, the MC, and the, and the feature in. They would, we'd stay at nice hotels. But now you're talking hundreds of thousands of comics. And it's, it's what I, I would, you know, I even find myself saying, I have to go through this bullshit again. I got I got to spank all these people out of the way, you know. Um, I walk into clubs in town, and there's, you know, and they go, "Who's the old guy? You know, who's this old guy?" And then I have to go out. I'm, you know, it's like you know, it's like those old westerns. Like it's like I'm the old sheriff, and these young gunslingers want to take me on, and I got to just dust my guns off. I tell them, "Look, I don't want to have to do this. Don't make me take my guns out because I'll fucking I'll embarrass you," you know. Yeah. So, uh, shortcuts, brother, you know, if, if there was any, if, if a shortcut came in front of you, hop on it immediately. I mean, if you date a girl who's a casting director, date her, even if she's a pig. Um, <laughs> even if she's a pig. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So, Monty uh, says bang pigs. If it yeah, does. bang pigs. Yeah, you know, what, you know, when, you know I, it, it, there's just too much competition right now. So, I, I, I would say to any guy... Something comes along, grab it, man. Like, this last comic standing, it's a crock of shit. You know, that, that one girl that was on last year from New York. She had, like, two minutes, worth, two minutes of material, and one of it wasn't hers. Would you really you know? Amy Schumer, though? Um, yeah. I, I think I might, too. Yeah, what about you guys? One to ten on a comic. <clears throat> I think that's irrelevant, on? actually, to tell you the truth. Oh. I don't know where to rate her. She, no, she needs a lot more help. I mean, she had that cocky attitude. And, Is she bangable, though? I think that's irrelevant, uh, don't you? That's a horrible question. That's, yeah, that's really not. You know, oh, I don't know. You know what? Yeah, they're I all think she looks like a she looks a little like a cabbage. Patch. She's a sweet girl. She's got a we cabbage. And we've all banged cabbage face, badges. Is, they give great all yeah. probably yeah. have done. I mean, she must, you know, listen. But what, do you blame her? I mean, no, she, no. she went for the gold ring. You, you can't like she had she she did. I mean, I know Bonnie McFarlane, and she did a couple of Bonnie McFarlane jokes. I mean, really? I, she, the difference between see, I've been around like. 20 years. I know the jokes. Right. I mean, I, hey, listen, and everybody, I, I've taken jokes. Everybody Have you, money? Fuck yeah. Such oh, as? You know, I, you know what I used to do? What? <laughs> yeah, tell us, please. When somebody pissed me off, mm-hmm. I would make sure I did an evening at the improv and I would do their material. Wow. Yeah, just to, because, you, you, you know, because back then, you know, I, I had a, you, you can't, you can't get violent with people. That's, Revenge that's, set. That's, all but right. but as far as your set today or the material it contains, there's nothing in there. Like What's that's that? not you wouldn't recommend <clears throat> com- comedians build like they they, they 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 fault Dane Cook and others for this and Mancia, but you wouldn't uh, advocate building your set on some material uh, that's stolen, would you? You know what? If you can sleep at night, that's what I can tell you. I mean, look at like Dane Cook, Mancia, Robin Williams, uh, Dennis Leary, uh, Richard Lewis. Right. I, I mean, Al Dolson. This famous Al Jolson, you know, where he used he used to go to board relax and watch guys take their material, do their do their acts on his show, and then send his lawyer out to these vaudeville guys and say, "Does Jolson will sue you if you ever do this material again?" Um, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, it's known, it's known. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I don't know what to tell you guys. You know yeah. what? It's, it's, it's how do you sleep at night? You know, yeah. where, how bad do you want it, and how bad do you want the devil sucking your dick? You know what I mean? How bad they <laughs> well, that devil. Devil. That's Sucking funny. Your... Yeah. That's so funny. don't take every uh, shortcut. You're All listening. Right. That's actually yeah. Louis, one right. of Louis uh, C.K.'s jokes. Yeah, you just ripped off Louis C.K. Carlos Messia is in, he's like he's like O.J. Simpson. He's in total denial. You ever run you into know? you? You run into him in L.A.? Yeah, yeah. O.J. I know, I, I know him. I, O.J. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would run into him. That's <laughs> fucking funny. hilarious. Hey, yo, Jay, <laughs> would you sign this for me? That's funny. <laughs> sign my knife. So we wanted yeah, to... I was, I, I was, I was going to say, knock, knock, who's there? OJ, open the door and give my shit back, motherfucker. 
Yeah. That's fun. Um, we want to talk a little bit about, uh, believe it or not, Monty, that uh, three out of the four panel here have uh, three out of the four. We all stood online. Stood online this year at uh, last comic overnight. Stand. What was it? Twelve hours in the yeah. rain. Yeah, on the street uh, for nothing. And they did the, they did the <laughs> auditions a little differently this year. And now, who were the judges? We didn't get to see judges. You uh, you wait online to be auditioned to see if you're good enough to be auditioned. <laughs> but the judges, uh, I believe, were uh, Richard Belsner. Was it was Belzer? Who? Was Belzer and, and uh, Sharipa, the guy from uh, Bacala from uh, yeah, Sopranos? Was your Sopranos. Oh, who knows? Buddy, I got judged. You friends with him? Oh, I'm real good friends with Sharipa. Isn't oh, he? Yeah? Is he's a he's like a booker in Vegas or something, right? Yeah, he was the major D of the club when I first started there. <laughs> yeah, he used to major D for Bud Friedman. He used to be the uh, yeah, think, he used to book there. Yeah, Sharipa is really connected into Vegas. No kidding. I heard it's he a, actually yeah. uh, tried to have a, a hit put out on Buddy Hackett one time. No, no, no. He's trying to whack uh, it to Buddy Hackett. Uh, uh, whack it. Uh, uh, right, so uh, don't uh, try so hard, Rob White. What? That's, yeah. uh, which hack joke is on the list, Evan? That was number two. Number Whatever. two. <laughs> okay. At least you got judged by real comics. I got judged by like a barrister at a freaking Starbucks. Yeah, it was yeah, I, I thought it was kind of lame with Amp being a judge. It was like, you know, fuck him. Yeah, well, that's you know, yeah. They had former contestants and winners last year, right? They had uh, yeah. It's, you know what they just you know what you know what was the first year they had they had numbers like American Idol. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they were up there in the twenty five million, and then my year it was so fucking fixed that the audience knew it was fixed, so they lost their audience, and then they, they then they had to do all this bullshit, and so I mean they had. That was the year uh, uh, Drew Carey walked out and uh, yeah, Caroline Ray. I got a great story about that. Drew Carey. Oh, please walked, tell. What was that? Oh, please tell. We want to hear tell. the story. We want, yeah. we want to hear it. Yeah, please tell. All right, Drew, Drew was fucking, you know, like, what they showed on the TV was nothing. See, it was, it, it was, what they showed on TV was Joe. Drew was screaming his fucking lungs out at the producers, right? Him, Beth Butler, was screaming at these guys, saying, this is fixed. You guys are fucked. You waste six hours of my time and and then at the end Drew finally said okay you know it's like when like when you have an argument with your wife you finally go ah all right you win okay all right. right and that's what they put on the TV show was that point but Drew was so anyways Drew uh he grabs me he goes let's get the fuck out of here you know and I didn't even if you know if you ever watch it again you'll notice that they have like four of the contestants on there there was supposed to be five. I walked off stage. I didn't go back on stage. Wow. I refused right. to go in front of camera again. Fuck them, you know? And so, so Drew and I, we had dinner. He goes, you know, this is bullshit. And I said, yeah. So he goes, he goes so he, there's a call like 7 o'clock in the morning. And they wanted to interview me. And uh, Drew calls me like 7 in the morning. He goes, come on. Come on my private jet. I'll fly you back to L.A. <laughs> so I said, all right, man. So I was on the private press with Drew and his girlfriend. And we flew back. And, you know, it's... It was kind of like the victors, like, you know what, fuck you guys, you know. Was that the reason why Jay Moore isn't really associated with the show anymore? Jay Moore got into a fight. Um, you know what Jay Moore did, see? No, we Jay don't. Moore went on uh, local. He got pissed off because he wanted more money or something, and uh, the producers were fucking with him. So what he did, he went on all these local television shows and gave out winners. For um, <laughs> so, bitter bastard. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, but he still got a part of it. But I mean, they they worked it out. That's how they got it back on TV. He the still has producing credit. Is, you know that fucking Barry Katz. You know that <laughs> guy. I mean, I don't trust him. He's like he's the guy that'll smile while he's like cleaning the blade in front of you to put in your back. Wow. You know? no, yeah, I didn't like you know okay. Barry. He, he gave me a, a big song and because like you know even like I called Barry this year. A friend of mine wanted to do the audition. So I called Barry, and I said, hey, man, get this. And he gave me the run around, and I'm saying, fuck you. You know, fuck you now. You're not that important. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sure. Hello? <laughs> <What's> <laughs> He's up? taking a call. Hey, listen, guys, I got to take this call. See you later. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Monty, Thank you, Monty Hoffman, hey, ladies. Pearls of wisdom yes. from comedic legend Monty Hoffman. Monty you're Monty listening Hoffman. to NLTU. Nobody listens to us. Internet radio. Okay. So well, apparently, you're not call. there. Uh, we've got a couple. We've got a couple of people on the line. Maybe we should take a couple of calls. Right. Yeah, let's take a call. Let's uh, who we got first? Uh, we've got a, uh, the anonymous guest five. Guest five. <laughs> 
Guess five. Guess Hello. Five. Guess You're live on the web with nobody right. listens to Guess us. Guess five. We're trying to get him on here. Right here he is. So, Guess wait, five. He's unmuted. He's muted. He's unmuted. Hello. Cinco. Yeah. What up, How baby? Are you? I'm we, unmuted. I'm muted. Hello. Oh, there Say you are. Something, okay. So what's your name and where are you from? Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear yeah. us? Yeah, yeah. Now I can. Okay. Who am I talking to? Oh, are you talking to uh, NobodyListensToUs.com? Well, who am I talking to right now? Well, you, uh, my name, I'm, I'm Tim Thompson. All of us. Tim Thompson, Tim Thompson. Evan White. Yeah. Danny Cameron. Yeah, this is uh, Joey from uh, I Was Online at the uh, last comic standing. Oh, Remember Joey. We subway, we kissed a little bit. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> you weren't supposed to talk about that. How are you, Joey? <laughs> yeah, I was the guy with the big afro. That's right. Joey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well endowed yeah, Joey. Joey. I remember you. What's going on? Yeah. Nah, was... nothing. I just wanted to know. I mean, how do you become a comedian? How do you become a comedian? Oh, uh, Courtney. Wow, what a question. Is Yo, this, Joey, is this Courtney? You, you know Courtney, don't you, Joe? Courtney. Of course they do. Yeah. Is well, this Marcus? Yes, this is this is uh, Marcus, Marcus is here. Rob White, Evan White. You know, can I just be honest with you? Sure, yeah, I please. was waiting for you guys to call me. Go, Billy. Wow. <laughs> ah, and we did. Doesn't work that way. Dad. So you were on live with guys, the last. Now you guys want to hang up on me, right? No, no, uh, no, no. In a minute, though. Do but uh, while you were online, the last comic was. What was your experience besides loving? Um, I thought it was a great opportunity to get raped by NBC. <laughs> It, it, it probably was your best opportunity. How so? How so? Yeah. What? Um, you sit online for 19 hours and you get 30 seconds to be funny in front of 10 other comics that are talking at the same time. So it's kind of nice. It's nice. And were you it's like able to... It's, like, it's like going to Cherry Grove really drunk on ecstasy with a song on and falling asleep and waking up the next day not knowing what hit you. <laughs> Yeah, so, for so, everyone around the country, Cherry Grove is a gay community. So, so Joe, this is going all over the world. How do you feel about huh? being raped? Go. So, Joe, with thirty seconds uh, and, and a judge, you're unable to be it's funny. Not Joe, goddamn, it's Danny. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ! Oh, it's Danny. He got us, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's Danny LaFaro posing as a man named Joe, which he often That's does it, to lure uh, children into Danny, his Danny, band. Danny, I thought I. Danny, uh, 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 Danny White. Listen, uh, you, 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 you fallen I off. I thought it was Billy Bingo this entire time. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Seriously. You know, what? you know what? I'll tell you what. This is why I said none of you have any spots now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny, listen, I'm going to tell you this story. Hey, Danny, how you doing? <laughs> man, I'm, I'm all right, man. Listen, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to make love to Mark Lunner. I'm going to get all you guys spots. Uh, these good. Good. Love, Thanks. Right? Someone didn't awesome. hear the news, Bring but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for calling, um, Danny. Appreciate that. Should we talk about that? Look, 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 everybody wants to hang up because I'm being political now no, in the no, comedy no, world, right? Kid. Look at this. Go, go. Local Talk work. to us. What are you trying to do? Nah, I'm only kidding. Nah, I'm only kidding. Listen, I want to wish everybody uh, good luck in the comedy business. This is being serious now. You know, it's a hard business. There's a lot of BS in it, but uh, if, you pull, if you plug through, man, personally and honestly, am I still being online here? Yeah, yeah you're still yes, on. you are. Still right. well, honestly, yeah. and this, this, this is the God's honest truth, I think there are different roads to success. Uh, you look at a guy like Joe DeVito, he's a hard, hard, hard worker, right? He's up there every, every, I mean, Jesus, I don't know how many times a day he goes up. He goes up in one day, and then there are days in a, month, in a year. Then there are other guys that, um, you know, they have a look, or they're young, or something. You know, you have to find, you know, your road. And then if you follow it and you believe, I think you can do it, man. You know, I, I, I've seen a lot Tony of you guys, even. Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Thanks, Danny. Yeah. Well, you got to use your personal power, Daniel. <laughs> How long have you well, been doing my, comedy, Danny? My personal power is I just want to threaten people and see if I can get some stage time. And is that working for you? <laughs> no, obviously not. Hmm, no. Maybe choose a different path. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, but how long yeah, have you been I'm doing very, comedy? I'm a very successful comedian. I work at Cinco de Mayo. Um, <laughs> and where is Cinco de Mayo located, by, by chance? I mean, I have never even heard Hollywood. of Hollywood. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's great Hollywood, club. Hollywood in Australia. Well, Chris Rock was here the other day. More, more you like know how it is. Right around the block from the Hollywood video. Park. Yeah, that's what he meant. <laughs> that's it. You're banned from Cinco. You'll never work at Port uh, Jet Station again. It's all you're done. Oh for me. 
Oh, All right, I'm guys. Favorite. I'll let you go. I got to. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The yeah, callers, I'll let you go. Right. The callers are dismissing he doesn't the show. Need, he actually doesn't need the exposure. He's, he's, he's overexposed as it is. Yeah, put some call. pants on. All right. So we, Wait, well, who's overexposed? You know what? I'm coming up. I'll tell you what. I'm kicking your ass tomorrow. Single tomorrow. I'm okay, taking it. I got to go. Well, I'd, I'd rather Goodbye. you. Frank I'd Rizzo, rather, everybody. Frank Rizzo. Well, I'm not good enough that you can't make love to me <laughs> like you're going to make love to Mark Lund. No. Like, no. He kind of disappointed that wasn't Billy up. Bingo. He's got to go. No How more weird quarters. is that? I'm disappointed, right. really. How about uh, we, we, have, uh, we have Bill in New York. You want to talk to Bill? Bill, how are you? You're uh, live on the web with nobody listens to us. Bill. Bill. Bill, how are you, Bill? God, I've been on hold so long, I felt like I'm calling my mortgage company. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys up to? How you doing? Hey, Rob, congratulations on your show, man. Well, uh, it's not just Nobody my show. Listens. You got at least 12, 15 people listening. Come on. <laughs> yeah, at least we that's, have actually that's about... That's cool. For actually, the first night, no, you probably got a good handful we there. Got, right? we, we're ranging. We're, in, we're hovering around 20. <laughs> it's passing our expectations. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. So I, I make 21, right? I'm the 21st customer. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry that the other guy had to leave, man. What, what was his we're name? Not. The com- com- comedy guy? Uh, Mr. Uh, Hoffman? Monty oh, Hoffman. Monty Hoffman. Yeah, I wanted to ask him a couple of questions, you know. Well, what do you me. want to ask him? I'll ask us. Well, I wanted to ask him. him, what kind of fish was he talking about? Uh, trout. Mackerel, all right. I thought it was trout, sorry. Okay. Mackerel, You're wrong, they, Danny. They I'm right? just an intern, what do I know? Right. I was at a wedding. wedding, they served mackerel one time, actually. Really? Yeah. How yeah, delish. Greek, isn't it? How delish. Are you a comic, Mahi. Bill? Mahu, Mahu. So anyway, uh, I just really wanted to call to congratulate you guys. You guys are still in the web. You look really good on there. Bill. Marcus, how you doing? Well, Bill, how are you, Mr. Condi? Very good, sir. Um, you know, we all have different goals, I guess, right? Different, uh, you know, different ideas, what we're trying to get out of this comedy game, I guess. Right? I'm probably the newest comedian around you guys. But, uh, you know, a lot of you guys, or, I'm not saying that you guys, but, you know, everybody wants it to be fair, I guess, you know. And I guess you've got to realize that, not, you know, it's just like anything else, it's not going to be fair, right? That's life. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Stage time, like that. Stage time seems like it's becoming a premium lately, you know? That's like, I mean, we're kind of lucky, really. We got these places like Cinco and even the Grind. I did my first gig at the Grind tonight, by the way. How oh, yeah? was that? How was that? Billy? Yeah, I'm getting a big time now. Hell was there yeah. a crowd there? What's that? Was there a decent crowd there? Uh, there were four people, uh, but they left when Billy James got up. I don't know why. Ooh, <laughs> right. just, Damn! Uh, they just happened. You're to the only one that you knows know and knows. Like when you get up there, <laughs> it's Horrible. On, Mr. Uh, Bill, on, on an average, how many uh, mics do you hit, in, say, in a week, in a, in a seven-day Oh, stand? man, well, last week I didn't get up at all. To, tonight and tomorrow night, and that's it. Hmm. You know, to try to get in front of a good audience, you know that. That's, a, that's the best time, right? Right. When you're in front of 80 people, maybe, 100 people of people that want to laugh, you know, versus, you know, people that accidentally bumped into a comedy show, uh, you know, that's night and day, right? Correct. Good. That's a very good point. So, yeah, no, very valid. Right. But uh, you know, we got that writing group going. That's cool. I think it's all about writing, right? Coming up with funny and material. Do you find the main thing. Do you find participating in the writing group uh, helps you with, with with the material? Well, yeah, because I'm I'm a lazy person, you know, by nature. So <laughs> I don't like to, for me to sit down and physically write something. At least I, I might bring a couple of ideas, and I can take a joke or two, or two out of it. You know. Yes. So that's kind of cool. And let the people know where the writing group is if they wanted to participate in that, if you wouldn't mind. Starbucks in Selden, right? Starbucks. Right on Jericho. Okay. What day uh, of the week do you guys meet? Also known as 25. Also known as, I swear to God, Dan, I'm going to kill you. Oh, and Be again, quiet. known Sorry, as uh, Middle Country Road. Yes, absolutely. Middle when, Country Road, too. <laughs> when, do you, when do you guys meet for the, the locals call in, the, in the area? Like Sunday, right? Sunday at 10 o'clock? Yeah, 10, 10.30, whenever anybody, oh, I feel like waking like up. Silly Jew. You have any? Do you want to, <laughs> sorry, we're gonna make fun of the Jew right now. But, uh, <laughs> so, sounded good. I don't know. <laughs> you guys have different varying experience, right? A couple of years, five years, two years, whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I got a question for you guys, right? Since I'm, you know, I've only been doing this like six months. Go ahead. So uh, this is for you, Marcus. Uh, when was when did you realize that when you got up on stage, you knew you had your everything together in your head, you felt totally comfortable getting up on stage? How many times? Uh, um, when did I? Kn- I would say 
and this is not to be like overzealous or anything, but day one, like from, and, and I, I still remember the first time I done I did comedy it was over in a place called uh, the Chumba Lounge, and and mm-hmm. I didn't go there even prepared to do comedy. I was there and it was open mic, and I already had in my mind some jokes I wanted to tell. Went up there and told those jokes. I've always <clears throat> had the ability to sell it, what they say, which is like no matter what the right. joke is, for some reason I can connect with the audience if I if I give a hundred percent, I can sell the material to get the audience to laugh, and that's just personality. So I believe that's just something that's been intuitive inside of me from day one uh, to be honest with you but then again it's about consistency so even though I was able to do that the first time I was on stage be consistent and do it on an everyday basis is where difficulty difficulty comes for myself modest market right, right. modest market <laughs> <laughs> have you reached that point Mr. a slice uh, of humble pie have you reached that point for yourself <laughs> me uh, yes yes uh, yes and no, you know, I mean, I guess it depends on, like you said before, how many times do I get up in a week, you know, if I get up two, three times a week, eh, by Wednesday I'm feeling pretty good. Let me right. take some Viagra. If I go three, three weeks without getting up on stage uh, the first time out, you know. Right. Uh, oh, man, do I remember all my jokes? You know, that's the worst fear, right? Absolutely, I sure. agree. Yeah. So. This phone sounds great in the toilet. I don't know. <laughs> it's working well. Hold on. It does. Phone is in the toilet. Uh, I can phone is in the toilet. Ooh. Yes, it is. Wow. Referring to so, uh, one of your jokes. I can hear Rob White in the bathroom right now. Danny Karen, no one asked you to say anything. I Until swear, Danny Karen, I'm going to beat you to death with your own kids. All right? Well, hold on a second. What are you doing? Bill Condi with his potty humor. You're um, listening to NLTU. Nobody listens to us. <laughs> That's dot com. Down listen, the so, uh, anyway, uh, Tim, you didn't really make out with Danny in the subway, did you? Uh, n- well, his name was Mike at the time. So. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was Joe. He said it was Joe. Joe you're a whore. You know what? I am a, whore. a dirty, dirty slut. I'm it's, a petri dish of disease. It's not gay <laughs> if you're doing it for the joke. All right. we, we have, have, uh, we have two. Honey, uh, hey, try it. Well, yeah. thanks for calling, Bill. We man. have two callers. I'm not sure. Talk to you later. Thanks, Bill. Thank uh, you, I'm not sure who, who they are because I gave um, gave out random pins here. All right. But we have two callers from New York. I'm going to pay, unmute the first one. All right, New York, if you can hear us, start talking. You're on. Nobody listens to us. Yeah, hi. Is Rob White in? Yeah, yeah Rob right White's here. Uh, hey, Rob White. How's it going? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you have your own personal call. Wow, we got a Rob White fan. <laughs> okay, okay, so we have a stalker. Right. He gave a bad Rob, tattoo Rob, or something? Rob, Rob, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> what's your name, sir? <laughs> Did you play at my high school? <laughs> uh, sir, what's your name? Me in I'm Principal Tannenbaum out at East I Slip You. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been there, and uh, my probation officer strongly advises against going back. Do you see East I Slip You? Uh, and there's a principal of it? Because Rob White uses guns and breaks into people's houses, so ha! <laughs> I believe I know the name of this caller. Um, I would like to guess uh, Joseph Pontillo. That is correct, sir. Ding, 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 ding. Please, everyone, put your hands together for the very funny and talented Joe Pontillo. Yep. Joe Pontillo, yes. everybody. Yes. I see you figured I'm out the... of Suffolk County right now. Wow. Are you? And, and Glenn Cove. Figured out how to call in. Did you... Uh, uh, yeah, that was a complete accident that I got through, but hey, why not? Joe, did, Joe, did you audition? Uh, I family? did not, but I did stand online in 2006. Speak to us about your experience, Joe. Oh, well, let's see. I got there at about 6 o'clock in the morning and um, (laughs) froze to death. 6 in the morning. For eight hours until my good friend Brian McGinnis showed up Okay. and uh, cut me in line because I'm a a dude like that. (laughs) Uh, And several sexual favors later. Uh, And then uh, was passed over by the camera crew several times, uh, you know, Gave him the finger, attempted to moon them, then realized it was too cold. <laughs> uh, and, then, uh, and then the police showed up at about 2.30, 3 o'clock, and cut off part of the line and said, everyone past this point is not getting in, go home. And which part of the line were you on at that moment? I was on the uh, part that was not going in. Uh, yeah, well, 6.30 again there, you <laughs> slacker. We should have been there two was, days earlier. That was just racist. They let all the... Um, all the Latinos in, but the Italians, well, no. Of course, all the knife carriers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Latinos are just going to sneak in anyway. I mean, that's what they do, right? They're very good at that. It's a border uh, joke. <laughs> yes, because there's a barbed wire fence between the judges and, uh, you know, the comics. 
You knew that, though, didn't you? Ant needs to be protected at all times. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Rob, Rob Giaffe, how are you? I'm well, Pardon? Joe. I'm well, Joe Pontillo. Thanks for asking. Did you do any shows uh, tonight, Joe? Uh, I did not. The show I was going to do was canceled. That's very so. Joe, Joe, Joe actually is the Joe DeVito of comedy. <laughs> Joe, he actually, he got, he does more do. gigs than anybody. Yeah. If you look at his MySpace, your your it's calendar true. is ridiculous. How do you how do you get the energy to go like night after night? What do you do like six seven days a week? It's coke, isn't it? Uh, no, there is no coke involved. Uh, just uh, it's Pepsi? Just crazy dedication and obsession, and uh, you know the demand I put on myself to you know get on stage yeah, every night and. Because that, you know, makes me feel whole and complete and and human. Well, no, but did well, I got too deep. What about what? But is there a payoff, Joe? Have you seen something change over the last? I know you've been doing it for about a year and a half now, taking taking comedy as seriously as you do. Have, um, you, have you seen changes? And what sort of changes have you seen over the last year and a half? I feel like I have become a really solid comic at this point mm -hmm. and um i don't know and, it, and just you know just people seeing you everywhere it raises your stock your value you mm -hmm. know comics see you bookers see you and they're like oh this guy must have some shit going on because he's every fucking place right so well, you know how do you, it gets how do you, you go about on other shows it gets you laid uh it gets you thrown in jail now you're talking <laughs> trash i haven't been laid once you, you've gone no, laid by doing shows? Angry, what? Yeah. Oh, oh, I have, but only by my girlfriends. That doesn't really count. <laughs> doesn't what, count. Is, what is the trick now? There, there seems to be like a drought as far as comics being able to get stage time uh, for a lot of budding new comics. What is the trick to, to basically getting in there and getting more stage time? Yeah, how do you keep your schedule so full? Yeah. Um, you have to get into the city. That is... Because you can get up every single night, even if it's an open mic. I mean, I haven't actually done an open mic now in probably two or three months. I'm totally bragging, but no. Yeah, you <laughs> but, you know, but you have to do that shit, like, you know, and that's where you network and you meet other comics, and, you know, other comics run bizarre shows, which might as well be open mics, but they're not really open mics. They're considered shows, and you can actually put them on your calendar then. Right. And, uh and then you just keep moving up, and then you do other things. You produce your own shows, like I produce shows at uh, the New York Comedy Club and the Broadway Comedy Club, and that helps me get into those clubs and so forth and so on. What? And then, you know, you hook up with other comics, they take you on the road for, again, sexual favors. Of course. So it, it, what do you feel about bringers and, and paying yeah, to go Yeah, bringers and barking and... Paying, oh, yeah. Paying, literally paying to go on stage. It's not just New York or L.A., it's... It's also like I have this article here over in England, so it's all over the world. So, what do you think about that? Really, they have bringers in England now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to buy. <laughs> what's a minimum of ten pints? Tea, you can go on stage this evening, lassies. <laughs> that was terrible. What are we all like, Gobbinet? <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst Fuck British you. accent ever. Yeah, that's not getting you up on stage, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, your uh, your thought because you are one of the few guys who actually produces their own shows, like you said earlier. Can you speak to the importance of that and the benefit? Uh, well, producing your own shows, for one thing, it gives you necessary stage time. It gives you the opportunity to make a uh, a tape if you'd like in front of an audience you know is going to you know be wanting to see you hopefully right and um you know you know you put other comics on the shows and they're like oh and then eventually they'll probably produce shows and they'll put you on and you know and depending on where you put them on where you put the shows on it helps you you know get in better with that club now to get as many gigs as you do get would you ever participate in like what, what evan spoke about earlier the barking or the bringer shows do you do, you do that um, well, I have never, I never barked because I was terrible at it, mainly because I think it was just because I was so short, people would see me and think like I was trying to steal their kids or something. Okay. <laughs> but, but I think you are their kid. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I was a, I was a really, really, like, solid bringer, and I don't mean to, like, sound like I'm bragging because I'm totally not, because most of my friends probably hate me from that. But I probably did somewhere in the vicinity of 30 to 35 bringer shows before I, you know, gave that shit up. 
Mm. 35 bringer shows. That's wow. something. So yeah. when we're going to sound like an AA and, meeting. And, when was your last how bringer? Many of them were uh, of use, I would say. Maybe two to four tops. The rest were just blunt bringers that were just uh, put on by producers who were trying to make money off comics. Mm hmm. Who here, who here in the room has done Bringers? Yeah, everyone's done Bringers. Yeah, everyone. That's how I started. Marcus, you did Bringers? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, he was Rob, in the contest. Rob, you did. No, I've never done a Bringer in my life. I'm actually that damn good. You're kidding. <laughs> People Medi- actually do <laughs> bring to my house. I hear laughing on the phone. I, think, I know. I'm over there like asking Joe, can I do a Bringer for you, Joe? <laughs> Joe. <laughs> and, and, terrible answer. You got it. You have to bring 10 people and you can perform in my basement. What, what, one final <laughs> question, <laughs> Joe, Thanks if you don't mind. Me. Um, and this is um, a personal thing. I feel like the bringers shows are a, what they would call a necessary evil. Um, and the reason I say that is because as new comics without a name, it's very hard to get someone to walk up the street and to come in there and just see some random guy named Evan Weiss. His name means nothing to anyone. I never had. <laughs> so they're not going to go in there and see who this guy is. And we some know random him. Jew. He I saw this guy in 88. He would have picked me, but I'm right behind right. anyone. So bringing shows are a necessary, e- necessary evil for comics right. because it's normally going to get an audience. Um, was that your, you know, your reasoning behind doing the bringer shows or, or, or something different? And do you agree? Um, do you agree? Actually? Honestly, when I when I first got into comedy, I was very naive. So like, people would be like, "Hey, do you want to do my show at Gotham Comedy Club?" And I'd be like, "Yeah." And they'd be like, "Okay, bring six of your friends." And I'd be like, oh, "Okay." And, <laughs> you sound like Coco uh, from Fame. <laughs> You're just so naive. So, so was, that, was that last <laughs> week? Or no, he says uh, he hasn't was, done it more. Uh, that actually was a call I had earlier this morning, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're excited. I hope you guys would come out and see me. <laughs> so, well, Joe, we'll guarantee six people right tell, here. Tell the people where, where you're producing some shows at so they can come out there and see you. I know you, you do a few. Um, well, Friday night I am doing a show at the New York Comedy Club. It is the Joe Pontillo Show. Uh, it is a $5 cover charge and a two beverage minimum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it stars the likes of, uh, actually posted by Mark Riccadonna, and uh, also stars Mike Vecchione, and um, the hell else they book? Helen Hong, and countless others from stage and screen. Um, did you say Except what time it starts? All, 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 all oh, 8 o'clock. Eight o'clock. Very hot do, do you have any uh, very hot, room, very hot. room on that show? Jeff? Rob is attractive <laughs> to all of those comics. Heard, heard about Helen that. Hong is really If fun. you Helen bring Hong nine people, you can get Becky on. Becky Owen is really hot. What yeah. other shows are you doing in the city? Uh, I'm all over the place. I do the Laugh Lounge. I do uh, Joe Franklin's Comedy Club. Yeah. Uh, the Underground Lounge. <laughs> uh, have you, and have then you, hot uh, that's a little too far up there. Have, the so. have, uh, have you done comics yet? Uh, no, I'm actually booked not on the main stage, but I am doing the basement of You're comics. You're doing the, the bar down near the bathrooms. Uh, yeah, right <laughs> the bathroom. that's right. It's down by the bathrooms. It's, it's, Rob will be doing the bathrooms. It's called the Oakey's so. Lounge. Yeah. Right. When are you coming back at the governor's? Um, hopefully soon. I have, uh, Actually, I'm the supposed answer I'm going to be no. at the brokerage soon, so. Oh, in the brokerage, yeah. <laughs> the uh, answer we were going for was no. Yeah, was our so. ownership recently changed. Just no so one's you know. doing it ever again. Yes, I, I heard about that. Tell the people, uh, uh, Joe, where they can reach you at. They want to get in touch with you to book a show or just come see you. Uh, well, you can go to my website. It is www.joepontillo.com. Uh, that's two L's and one L. Because people keep spelling it with two O's, because that's sexy. And uh, <laughs> you can also go to my MySpace, which is uh, linked up on my uh, web page. Uh, the the URL for the MySpace is very confusing. It's actually Yo Mixel Clicked. Uh, Mixel Clicked, of course, for oh, all you from Superman, Superman. Buffs, is yeah. one of Superman's arch nemesis. So and, if uh, we spell that backwards, you disappear. You're a total uh, actually, nerd. I, I don't, but uh, for some reason or another. Uh, Rob White does. Very weird. Wow. What? <laughs> we oh, comic God. books, you illiterate yeah, you schmuck. Two people should just sit there and die. Joe, we want to thank you. Uh, hey, Gilbert uh, Godfrey did the voice of Mixer Play. Did, did he? Did he really? Did he really? Wonderful. No show. one cares. Get out of here. Okay. Uh, he did. Yeah. Did he? I didn't know that. JoePontillo.com, ladies and gentlemen. Check Joe it out. Absolutely. Yes. So let's thank Joe for... Yeah, thank uh, you. Joe, thank everybody. You, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. I uh, just want to let you guys know, Monty uh, emailed us on MySpace and wanted to 
apologize for having to cut out quickly. No, it's, he, yeah, said, no. he actually he like said it was a lot of fun. He was great. But he stands by the racial comments. Yeah, he, <laughs> he couldn't go longer than an hour Oh, and yeah, we really, we're, so, we're so horrible. Oh, God, Monty. Wish you could get another fucking 45 minutes in, brother. You were killing. Oh, jar money. That was jar oh, money. Someone's got to put a quarter in the cookie jar now, Marcus. Damn, yeah, Mont. Too bad you had to go, bro. Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Rob's going to I could have definitely used another mind. 45 minutes Minus of Minus $2. Dollars. Can we just go ape shit? We want now. him um, back next time. More anti-Semitic. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> All right, so where were we, Evan? What's next on that list? Well, we wanted. To, well, actually, we don't. We're we're, we're running <laughs> kind of short on time. We're gonna, yeah. We, we actually do it till two in the morning now. No, well, we wanted to right. talk um, uh, as part of uh, as part of raising the awareness of the website and the radio show. We've been we've had a uh, hotline up for the last couple of weeks, and we've been asking comics all around the country to leave us a message. Sort of promoting themselves, also see if they're excited about the show. Some of these are good. So we're actually going to play a couple of them, um, and we can discuss. Is that them. number still up? Can we critique them? Uh, after the we're number done? will be up. The number's not up right now. We're trying to drive people onto the phone. All right, but uh, look on the website. You'll see the number. You call up, leave a message, and we'll play it for you. We'll try to promote you because that's what we're all about. Trying yeah, to help comics, we, right? Because people except for like the ones we know. Joe Pontillo, who books the New York Comedy Club, is listening. Yeah, absolutely. And and as he said, also Laugh Factory. And uh, we all know he does the green room alongside Mr. Will Vote here right here on Long Island. He doesn't okay. actually book that, though. All right, here's, no? one, of the, here's one of the first guys. Is, uh, <laughs> he told me. He told me. Sorry, God. Okay. Oh, I all right, we'll listen to him. Who's this? That's music. Oh, that was, that was sexy, actually. Was yeah, this is just dance. book him. Produce it. Like junk in Evans. Come on. Producing Danny Karen, get it right, Danny. Here we go. You're the worst human being ever. Man. Make me a sandwich. Hi, my name is W.B. Ward. I'm not a comedian strictly. I'm a mentalist. But my shows sure are funny. Or at least my audiences are because well, all I have to do is wait for somebody to do something stupid, which usually happens within the first five minutes or so. And then we just have a whole lot of fun from there on. Uh, you can find me on the Internet at WBWard.com or on MySpace. That's how the heck I find out about you guys. So this is uh, this is really really cool. So hey, you guys be blessed and uh, keep thinking those good thoughts. Thank you, Mister Ward. Oh, okay, yeah, nice. um, he's a mentalist. What is a menstrualist? What, what a is mentalist? mentalist. What, what is that? Uh, like uh, Chris? It's like you're getting mental oh, with yourself. Like R L the guy, like R L guy, like him. R L Stein, like R L Stein. Is that like yeah, him? Yeah, no, that's uh, an author. <laughs> you got me. You got me. He was able to use his Wait, mental his powers w- to get me. To if play you're listening, that. Colin, we would love to know what a mentalist. W B Ward is his name. Yeah, W B Ward. Thank you, yeah. Mister Ward. Who else we have? Rob. I hope you don't know what I'm thinking. Author's name right there. He, does. Was, he sounds like the principal of a high school. Wasn't he playing? He was like planning to be on the show. Tell that story. Uh, oh, geez, no, 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 no. All right, on. what's the next one? We don't have much time here. All right. Next guy. Hey, what's up? This is Timmy Isom. I'm from Bloomington, Indiana, and you can find me on MySpace at myspace.com slash ha ha Timmy. Check out my page, leave comments, check out my different bits and stuff. Real funny. Peace. All right, Tim. All right. I like him already. I, I like him. That is him. a Dateline <laughs> trap, people. Yeah, Watch out. To, I am not going he's, to he's younger than me. Hi, I'm actually Chris Hansen. Yeah, Danny LaFaro's already got his car keys. But uh, check it out. You know what? The he's kids like, start young doing him. comedy. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Over there. It actually yeah. sounds younger than you. I'm not Danny. adding That's him on my mind. I just face. said that, but... Okay. Yeah. Who else we have, Rob? I'm intern, so what do I know? That one was funny. I like that. That kid sounded cute. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ernesto Lopez, comedian from Dallas, Texas. I got your little MySpace message about your uh, radio show. And it says, call this number. I was actually trying to call for another number for naked Asian chicks, but (laughs) I guess I dialed this one instead. So I guess I'll leave a message to promote myself. Uh, from Dallas, Texas, Ernesto Lopez. You can find me on MySpace, or you can Google my name under Ernesto Lopez Comedy, and it'll pull up all my little stuff, my videos, my schedule, and that's pretty much it. I would love to come to New York, as I've never been there, and do some of the clubs out there. God bless the progress. I love you all. And I'm on my way to Timmy's Section. house. <laughs> All right, All right Ernesto. Ernesto Lopez. You can also find a, a, here for the progress. How are you all doing? <laughs> progress, 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 progress. Hey, hey, hey! 
What? It's turning into a Black Panther rally. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I think that's of when I see Danny We want progress. We want progress. Well, that was Ernesto. Who do we have next, Rob? All right, well, here's somebody we know. He's a pistol. Marf Marf. Hey, it's Stevie GB. Hey. I'm telling you who I am. It's Ugh. Stevie GB. Where am I from? Holbrook, New York. <laughs> you can find me on the internet at www.steviegb.com. I'm the world's funniest accountant. Wow, that there is true. He is, he is the funniest guy. He's one of Long Island's finest right there, people. Now, now let me please officer. I mean, no, no, I mean comedian. He's a Long Island vet. He's been around. I'm not doing these great. in order, so we, well, if I did it before. They put old Timmy on again. <laughs> little, he got me a little, yeah. I'm starting to get a little soft here. <laughs> a little <laughs> acid. Timmy, yeah, Tim. Uh. I have a lot of bits. So. Hey, this is comedian Will C. Beverly Hills, California. And in between Ooh. my shift at Del Taco, you can find me telling jokes at all the stages of the Laugh Factory Comedy Store, the improv. Make sure you check me out at www.willc.net. Or uh, MySpace slash Twin Chin. That's T W I N C H I N. Uh, look for me and talk to you guys soon. This is an automated voice message. If Will sent me a taco from Del Taco, <laughs> I would get him stage time. I know Joe Pontillo. We'll get you out to New York. I know people. Okay. Between Joe Pontillo and Dryerson, I'd get him some time. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a Del Taco, okay? Send that thing, FedEx it. Yes. It's okay. on. Uh, Who else do we have, Rob? This is the, actually the guy, the first guy who called. Oh, I like hey, him. Hey, what's going on? This is comedian Tidy Diller from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, been on BET Comic View, been on Jay Leno, Comedy Central, Stars in Black, First Amendment, HBO Comedy Festival, Damn. been a little bit of everywhere. But you can reach me at www.myspace.com backslash Tidy Dillard, T-I-D-Y-D-I-L-L-A-R-D. That's myspace.com backslash Tidy Dillard. Contact me about doing gigs or anything for the funniest brother I can do any room that you get. Funniest brother you want to meet? I'm the king of the Midwest right now. Come and get me. All right? Peace. I'm looking for you. Jeez, oh, Marcus. That's the funniest brother I ever met. <laughs> That guy's pretty good, but I tell you, funniest brother in the Midwest, that's like that's like being funniest brother in McDonald's, you know? Like, you're wearing the crown, like, no one gives a shit. I got the mop, okay? <laughs> you know, I'm the funniest motherfucker in here. You don't even sound black. He, what? That uh, guy Evan, sounds, uh, Evan, we had this discussion. Sound How Jewish. does he not Evan. sound black? What does the sounding black sound like, Evan? It sounds like... Oh, uh, yeah, Mike. go with that. <laughs> yeah, Evan, why do you solve, solve that Evan. riddle? What riddle does black Evan. sound like to you, yeah, Evan? Yeah, what does black riddle? sound like, Evan? Riddle, riddle me this. this. Gonna go, they sound scary. Sounds like it sounds like a... Uh, I, so I sound black to you, Evan? It sounds like car do you, tires. Do you, buy, do you spend and Jewish? You car tires. I spend like when you, Jewish. I spend cheap. Jewish. Your car's being stolen. I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't, like the term sound Evan, black. Wait, Evan, could, Evan could you do an impression? I made a joke. We oh, want to hear an impression. On. I was going to go with the uneducated, more like a rapper sound. <laughs> That, that sounds black. Wait, 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 wait. Digging the hole. Evan, I, I need you to describe. What does a black person sound like? Do an impression. We want to hear an impression. Yeah, please, Evan. Wait, then you got to do a joke. And make sure it sounds like Barack yeah. Obama, please. you got to do a joke. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, we can. That's Mark, what it sounds That's what a Marcus does does it, a Jewish impression. I need and change. Evan, yeah, we're going to do a racial. We're going to go equal. So, okay. Yeah, Evan, Ready? do a black Marcus, impression and make sure 30, it sounds. Got 30 seconds. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Make sure it it's sounds. Like that, it's like that episode. Like it's like that episode of The Odd Couple where Felix gets messy and Oscar gets clean. You, could, you guys could switch. Oh, so which one's the messy one? What are you trying to say here, Rob? Let's do the next one. We're running out of time. This guy Evan, is. We'll uh, save that for later. This guy, we're actually going to. black voice, Evan. Make sure it sounds like Condoleezza Rice. Excuse me. Black voice, Evan. Ladies. Make it sound like Condoleezza Rice. Ladies. getting out of control. Ladies. All right, this gentleman is going to be a guest in a couple of weeks. What ladies? Ugh. Hey, this is comic Alex Facella. I'm from New York, New York, and I heard about not nobody listens to us, and uh, you can find me on MySpace at uh, myspace.com slash Alex Facella, A-L-E-X-F-O-S-S-E-L-L-A. Or go to my, uh, I'm featured on dailycomedy.com, D-A-I-L-Y-C-O-M-E-D-Y.com, and search for my name. And I'm hoping that if you go to any of my websites, it will validate me, and I'll feel like maybe somebody loves me, even though nobody really does. And that's why Valentine's Day sucks. And that's why I do comedy. That's why anybody should do comedy. And I'm babbling because I'm trying to be funny. 
But anyway, uh, call me or do something that involves me on your computer because I'm desperate and I'm mildly funny, which is a good combination, and I think we'll take anyone very far. All right, bye. He just described everyone in this room. Yeah, pretty much. I like him. What was <laughs> he hit name? me with desperate. Alex, Alex if you know Fisella. what I mean. You sound funny. Who? Yeah, well, he's over at Daily Comedy? That's yeah, a great a, website. He's at Daily Comedy. Where, where is he from? Did he, Daily sorry? Comedy. Open your ears. he's in ears. New Jersey. He's, 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 I meant literally not. He's from. Print. He's going to. He's going to school. Or Does something. he have a room? I right, can wait, do. No, here we go. <laughs> hey man, uh, this is Rodney Keith with Habitual Ritual Comedy in Noda, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, hey, Fuck man, I don't know why I'm calling. To be honest with you, people listen to me. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like what y'all are doing. Okay. I'm a huge fan. Um, All right. I put my dog to sleep last night. Ooh, and sexy. You're doing it to me, too. Um, right. Habitual ritual comedy. I did my set for my dog. Wine up, no da. <laughs> Fucking blast. Super Cat Matt. Super what? Crackers and Snack Me. Live band. I mean, it's retarded. Crackers Peace out. Nobody listens. Meat? Call me back. Habitual ritual. See, nobody was listening he, to you. He got me right? on habitual, habitual ritual. I don't habitual know what that ritual. is. I don't even know, but I'm going to go smoke some of it. I don't know. <laughs> they sell that shit at this time of night. I mean, what is Who do you have next, Rob? I got a number for you. We'll find it. Oh, angry Mark. Um, let's see. Um, here we go. Here we go. I think Evan's getting punched. Here we go. <laughs> In five minutes. He's getting the blast. <laughs> <laughs> jokes, Marcus. Yeah. I don't even know you. You're fucking giving me your fucking number. What the fuck? Dad? That's four F bombs already. Uh, I still don't know you. Um. I'll break your legs. I'll break your legs. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll use my drumstick on your snare drum. Your ear. I'll break your freaking eardrums with my Robert, I'm scared. Dicks. Could you hold me? Someone hold. Right. Evan, hold yeah. Danny. Hold my hand. Fucking. I'm Not like Daryl Rummins, and uh, I'm from like Camry, California. You can go to DarylRummins.com or MySpace.com slash Daryl Rummins. D a r y l r u m m e n s. Is he gonna touch me? <laughs> Stupid. And uh, fucking what the fuck? Do that shit. Let's do this. Did he just kill fucking a hunter? Yeah. All right. What? I make balloon animals yeah. and I do. This guy gonna touch me later on. I'm kind of scared. See, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a kid's clown. I like to I snuff out hookers and then blow lines of coke. All right, this one. I is... have Sandra Levy in my basement. All right, yeah. all right this Sandra is the Levy. this is pretty much the polar opposite. Here it comes. Steve Levy. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm a nobody, and I'm the most huggable band of comedy. What the hell? This is Nate Ford. Hey, you can reach me at uh, www.myspace.com slash huggable, H-U-G-G-A-V-L-E, and for me. That's me, <laughs> and I like pie. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Bobby? Put down that goddamn gun and get over here now. <laughs> what are you doing with that pie, boy? Take that pie. <laughs> Take that thing out your ass, Peggy, that Bobby. boy ain't right. Hey, Nate, Nate actually called, Nate actually oh, called back. Pie. He Nate called, called back. back. Here, here's his, yeah, his second. Is he the devil in this? Uh, this is uh, Nate Ford again. Uh, my roommate was telling me that I have a complicated website for my body space. I don't think it is, really. Uh, it is uh, www.myspace.com slash huggable, H-U-G-G-A-B-L-E, and 8-4-D, and 8 4 d Kind of spells out Nate Ford. That's my name. It's not that complicated. Oh, really neat, Do you thanks. think so? Ah, oh, man. Uh, also, you can also email me at huggable at 840 at yahoo.com. Yeah, take that, Eric Cacotis. Take that. All right? Yeah, take that. Eric is funny.com. That's right. See how easy that is? It's not that easy, Eric. It's funny. They're having their own Who is show. Eric? <laughs> Will and Grace. Go ahead to put up with. You see, uh, who's the bottom? Who, who's the top? Who, uh, I'm Eric's gonna try to leave this without being awkward. Funny dot com. All right, sorry. Uh, yeah, we're just a bunch of nobodies. Listen to nobody listens. Do a hot talk radio. See. 
Just yeah. listening actually, to you and I, making mucus. That was actually... <laughs> that was the <laughs> gargle. He's going to die that's from his funny. own mucus. I thought you hear that. That's yeah. all I can hear is the, is the bubbling in his <laughs> navel cavity. Ah, thank God. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's great. That was a very, I thought it, it was very creative. It was very they, creative. They, were, they did a little bit for us. That was good. They did. They, I yeah, like yeah, that. And then there was a little slap and tickle. They did a couple of bits. Here's, uh, here's actually who we uh, nominated as the MySpace of the week. Oh, my God. No. Uh, Everyone, oh, round of applause. MySpace. Of the week, someone named uh, Sarah Newell. I don't know if she could. She might have dialed a in. A girl uh, abroad. She might have dialed in, and we uh, could hang out. Oh, Sarah, we'd love to talk to you, Sarah. If you can call in some other time. What's the name again? Sarah Newell. Sarah Newell. Here she comes. How do you spell this? N e w l. Yeah. Here. Oh, oh, there's some music there. Yeah. What just like, happened? Is that Cindy Lauper. Did Evan die? <laughs> oh, no, no, he just got wrong. resurrected. Don't worry. Uh, wrong, wrong. Uh, give, him wrong. A, give him one. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, comedian Sarah Newell, originally from Dayton, Ohio. I am reading your MySpace page. It says to call and leave a message, and I want to let you know I'm reading, and later I will be listening. So I guess that makes me nobody. Dang. No, sorry. Dang, dang, dang. She sounds cool. Give it up for Tracy Jane. Yeah. Yes. Dang. Dang, dang. Tracy Jane. Reconstruction never happened. Dang. Well, guys. Ding, dang, do. God dang. Textbooks say differently. Do not correct me, Danny. I swear to God. I'm going to give you a wedgie that will give you cancer. But we're not going to stop until we run out of goo goo juice or whatever. We got to stop not. because Marcus is going to beat the crap out of Evan. I'm going to no, point it last. Next <laughs> on nobodylistenstous.com. Tony Lice next week. fights. Mark Johnson. But honestly, yeah, we are wrapping up and want to thank you for listening to our first show. Yes. You get a round of applause. Yeah, thank you. Oh. This is for our audience. A round of applause for our audience. Thank you very much. I hope you appreciate yeah. it. And uh, we will be back next week, 10 o'clock, Monday, every Monday. And nobody listens to us. dot com. Thank uh, you. Thank uh, you very much, guys. Evan, funny. you get the last let's, word. Let's plug. Um, here, oh, plug anyone? Uh, some of our sites. Anyone here. doing shows? We'll roll out on we'll some music with, with Monty Hoffman. Monty Hoffman.com, of course. For uh, Monty Hoffman.net. Hoffman. It's also on MySpace. And Monty is uh, one of our top friends on Nobody Listens to Us.com's sure. MySpace. So and you can he make was friends. the he was a coach. Let's thank let's, let's thank Monty again because he did a great job. He was great. He gave us so many pearls of wisdom. I it was fantastic. Did. Actually, that was he was a great first guest. And it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Who else do we have calling in today? Uh, Joe Pantillo. Joe Pantillo. Sparky. Yeah. Danny Karen. Brian I mean, uh, Danny LaFaro. Danny LaFaro. Danny LaFaro. Dottie. Dottie. Roush, of course. Brian Katea. Katea. Brian Katea, who did two shows tonight. Yeah. Two mics. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Two mics, one Don't cup. punch him, please. I'm going to bludgeon you today. <laughs> oh, uh, Where are you going to be performing this week, uh, Evan? I'm going to uh, South Place in Massapequa. 1495 Hicksville Road. Rob, you got any gigs coming up this weekend? I'm going to actually be doing the Gateway on Saturday night. Wow, Saturday. shout out to Mr. Dylan. Yeah. Uh, Robert, you busy this weekend? I'm, right? I'm going to be at uh, I'm going to be at Prime 15 in Ridgewood, New Jersey, with Mike Morse from the Howard mm. Stern Show. Yeah. Very good. That's a good yeah. solid. Really game. nice. Yeah. Thanks. And don't forget uh, Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo. In Tuesday, Fort Jeff. Oh, yeah. That's, every, right. that's where I'm going to be. We'll all be there, Cinco de Mayo. We'll Cinco de Mayo, there. where every day is the 5th of May, and every Tuesday is comedy. Definitely <laughs> check out Friday Night Face Off, the only improv troupe here on Long Island, the longest running improv troupe here on Long Island. Why Both are we down. promoting? You're not in that anymore. I will be certainly shortly, actually. Going back. Oh, wow. In my return. Back in my return. Back uh, big news. Yeah. Big news, everyone. Make my return. It uh, won't be this week, but uh, very shortly I'll be back there, hopefully on stage. Well, with them, they're so. they're, they're, they're going to lose their funding, uh, right? Friday night face off. Okay, who's who's, who's, who's running that now? Uh, a gentleman, uh, Vinny Russo. Actually. Oh, Vinny's still running it. Yeah, v- Vinny and Big also, Vinny. Yes, Big Vinny. Exactly. Big I was Vinny. I was actually there for uh, Krasner's last show. Nobody yeah. cares. Everyone cares. Not about you, Danny. You, you are the intern. Where are you going to be this weekend? Anywhere nice? You going to be performing? I'm going to be at Cinco de Mayo, and I'm going to be at my house, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, we can leave on that's that, though, All right. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah, and I'll be somewhere. All right, have a good night. <laughs> yep. Okay. See ya.